Hello and welcome as Zenith Players begins our 16th week of live readings with Cyrano de Bergerac. I'm Claire, I'm the Artistic Director of Zenith Players. All of the actors you'll be hearing tonight are volunteering their time and talent from their homes to bring bring some entertainment to your page. But please check out his website, shakespeareproves.com and his Patreon at patreon.com slash Shakespeare. We will provide links to all of his amazing and fun content below in the comments. Please also tune in on July 8th, uh, that is next Wednesday, for A Midsummer Night's Dream of Equality, directed by our friend uh, Maisha. Alone, whom you will make, among others, uh, working to protect uh, voting rights and reform our criminal justice system. If you are interested in more information about our organization and who we are, what we do, and how we volunteer, please check out our website, zenithplayers.com. Please uh, feel free to check out our donations page. 100% of all donations go toward production costs, uh, which these days consist of various subscriptions that allow for readings like this one to happen. So if you would like to read with us in future projects, um, we would love to have you join us. Please send us an email at casting at zenithplayers.com and our tech director will get you on board. Please join us on Sunday for Romeo and Juliet. As always, we want to acknowledge and thank all of the medical professionals and essential workers who have been working tirelessly to keep us all healthy and as safe as possible. Uh, we also want to acknowledge those demonstrating and protesting for pushing forward um, with the uh, current human rights uh, situation that is happening, we would like to acknowledge uh, that Black Lives Matter. And uh, we also would send our full support to all of those protesting at this time. Please now relax and enjoy Cyrano de Bergerac. Cyrano de Bergerac with Jack Mason, Gwen Wark, Noah Stanzione, Garrett Hicks, Shakira Searle, Patrick Brockway, Johanna Erickson, Juliana Frasca, Isabella Pepe, Davian X. Arroyo, Nicholas Tomaselli, Christian Recca, Justine D'Souza, Hillel Adiv, Ginny Crooks, Erica Vieira, Zandali Montero, Mira Singer, Arlie Rubens, with Olivia Clavel Davis as Roxanne, and Dan Costellic as Cyrano de Bergerac. Act One. I can't believe Come. that. Oh, this is so exciting. Come on, say, do you see? Do you think Sarah? Renee over here. Have you, have you seen Pierre? I'm... Is there cards and dice already? Hmm. No, I don't, I don't know where he went. Who's playing tonight? As the never start on time. Oh, it's so he's eight minutes late, and mm, uh, for shame. No, uh, Renee, Renee, your seat is uh, Renee. I cannot. I can never find my seats. Where is there an usher? Uh, I couldn't. I... Make room. Make room. Oh. oh, excuse me. These are horrible seats. I'm sorry. They're the best I could do on such short notice. Oh, mm. I have to do. Bring over some of that cider. Where are the marquees to be seated? Uh, where? Uh, do you know which? Christian. Oh, it is orange. Minier. Minier. <laughs> Not drunk yet. <laughs> May I introduce you, Baron de Nouvellet? Tis a pretty fellow. My lords, uh, de Kiji and de Brasili. Delighted. This gentleman comes from Turin. Yes, I have scarce been twenty days in Paris. Tomorrow I join the guards and the cadets. Tis crowded. Yes, indeed. Friend, but I uh, came here to I give you pleasure. Uh, the lady comes not. I will betake me again to my pet vice. No, 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 you are... 
who you who are ballad maker to court and city alike can tell me better than anyone who the lady is from whom I die of love. Stay yet a while. I fear sh me she is coutetish and over nice and fastidious. I who am so poor of wit, how dare I speak to her? How address her? This language that they speak day to, ah, and right confounds me. I am but an honest soldier, and timid withal. She has ever her place there and on the right. The empty box, see you. I must go. Nay, stay. I cannot. The associate waits me at the tavern, and here one dies of thirst. Orange, Orange drink? drink. Milk? <laughs> wine? Huh. I will remain a while. Uh, let me taste this wine. All right. Ooh. Ragano. 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 Just the famous tavern keeper, Ragano. Sir, have you seen Monsieur de Cyrano? Uh, the pastry cook of the actors and the poets. <laughs> you do me too great an honor. Nay, hold your peace. True, these gentlemen employ me. On credit, he is himself a poet of a pretty talent. Oh, so they tell me. Mad after poetry. Tis true that for a little ode. You give a tart. Oh, a tartlet. Brave fellow, he would fain excuse himself. And for a triolet, now, uh, did you not give an exchange? Some um, little rolls. <laughs> They were milk rolls. And as for the theater, which you love... Oh, to distraction. I'll pay you your tickets, huh? With cakes. Your place tonight. Come, tell me in my ear, what did it cost you? Four custards and 15 cream puffs. Monsieur de Cyrano is not here. It is strange. Why so? On Mont Fleury place. Aye, tis true that that old wine barrel is to take Fallon's part tonight. Uh, but what matter is that to Cyrano? How? Know you not? He's got a hot hate for Montfleury, and so has forbid him strictly to show his face on the stage for one whole month. Well? Montfleury will play. He cannot hinder that. Oh, that I have come to see. Who is this Cyrano? A fellow well-skilled in all tricks of fence. Okay. Is he of noble birth? Aye, noble enough. He is cadet of the guards. But tis his friend, Le Bré, yonder, who can best tell you. Le Bré, see you, seek you for de Bergerac? Uh, aye, I am uneasy. Is it not true that he is the strangest of men? Uh, true, that he is the choicest of earthly beings. Poet! Soldier. Musician. And of how fantastic a presence. Mary, it would puzzle even our grim painter Philippe de Champagne to portray him. Methinks, whimsical, wild, and comical as he is, only Jacques Callot, now dead and gone, had succeeded better, and made of him the maddest fighter of all his visored crew. With his triple-bloomed beaver and six-pointed doublet, the sword sticking up neath his mantle like an insolent cocktail. He's prouder than all the feast art bands of who Gascony has ever been and will ever be the prolific alma mater. Above his Toby Ruff, he carries a nose. Oh my, <laughs> my good lords, what a nose is his. When one sees it, one is fain to cry aloud, nay, tis too much. He plays a joke on us. Then one laughs and says he will anon take it off. But no, Monsieur de Bergerac always keeps it on. He keeps it on and cleaves in two any man who does remark on it. His sword? Tis one half of fate shears. Will not come. I say he will, and I wager a foul a la Ragano. Ah, gentlemen, she is fearfully, terribly ravishing. When one looks at her, one thinks of a peach smiling at a strawberry. And what <laughs> freshness. A man approaching her too near. 
by chance to get a bad chill at the heart. Is she? Ah, is it she? Ah, tell me quick, I am afraid. Magdalene Robin, Roxanne, so-called. A, a subtle wit and pressure. Whoa, is me. Free, an orphan, uh, the cousin of Cyrano, of whom we were now speaking. Who is yonder man? <laughs> Comte de Guiche, enamored of her, but wedded to the niece of Armand de Richelieu. Uh, would fain marry Roxanne to a certain sorry fellow, one Monsieur de Valvert, a viscount and accommodating. She will none of that bargain, but de Guiche is powerful and can persecute the daughter of a plain untitled gentleman, more by token. I myself have exposed this cunning plan of his to the world in a song which, oh, he must be rage at me. The end hit home, listen. No, good night. Where go you? To Monsieur de Vevert. Have a care. It is he who will kill you. Stay where you are. She's looking at you. It is true. Tis I who am going. I am a thirst, and they expect me in the taverns. No sign of Cyrano. <laughs> All the same. A hope is left to me, but he has not seen the playbill. Begin! 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 Play! Begin! Play! Oh, I've got to win this bet. <laughs> he pays a fine court, your de Guiche. Fuck! Another Gascon! Aye, but the cold supple Gascon, that is the stuff success is made of. Believe me, we had best make our bow to him. What fine ribbons! How call you the color, Count de Guiche? Kiss me, my darling, or timid fawn? Is the color called sick Spaniard? Faith, the color speaks truth, for, thanks to your valor, things will soon go ill for Spain and Flanders. I go on the stage. Will you come? Come, you, Valver. Viscount, ah, I will throw a fall in his face, my... Christian puts his hand in his pocket and finds there the hand of a pickpocket who's about to rob him. Hey! Oh! What? I was looking for a glove. And you find a hand. <laughs> Let me but go, and I will deliver you a secret. What is it? Lanier, he who has just left you. Well? His life is in peril. A song writ by him has given offense in high places, and a hundred men, I am of them, are posted tonight. A hundred men? By whom posted? I may not say. A secret. Oh. Of the profession. Where are they posted? At the Port de Nel, on his way homeward. Warn him. But where can I find him? Run round to all the taverns. The golden wine press, the pine cone, the belt that bursts, the two torches, the three funnels, and at each leave a word that shall put him on his guard. Good. I fly. Ah, the scoundrels. A hundred men against one. Ah, uh, to leave her, and him, but save Lanier I must. The play, the play! What means the sudden silence? It's true. I have just heard it on good authority. The Cardinal! The Cardinal! The Cardinal! The Cardinal. The Cardinal. The Cardinal. The Cardinal's here! Montfleury comes on the scene. Aye, to see who begins. Cyrano's not here. I've lost my wager. <sighs> Tis all the better. Oh. Montfleury! Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Montfleury! Montfleury! Montfleury. Oh, well done. Hey.
Speak up, villain, your mic is muted. Villain, did I not forbid you to show your face here for a month? Tis he. Cyrano. King of clowns, leave the stage this instant. Do you dare defy me? Marflurry. 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 <laughs> well, chief of all the villains, must I come and give you a taste of my cane? Off the stage! I shall be angry in a minute. Oh my. Yes. Yes. Oh my. Look at the size of it. Oh man, take warning. If you go on, I shall feel myself constrained to cuff you in your face. And if these lords hold not their tongue, shall feel constrained to make them taste my cake. Enough, Buffalo. If he goes not quick, <laughs> I will cut off his ears and slit him up. Uh, out, he goes. Yet? Is he not gone yet? Good. I shall mount the stage now, buffet-wise, to carve this fine Italian sausage. Thus! Ah. If that muse, Sirrah, who knows you not at all, could claim acquaintance with you, ho <laughs> ho believe, seeing how urn-like fat and slow you are, that she would make you taste her buskin soul. <laughs> on, Flurry, go on. Please, please, I pray you have a care. If you go on, my scabbard soon will render up its blade. Leave the stage! Oh! <laughs> Did someone speak? Monsieur de Cyrano displays his tyrannies. A fig for tyrant! What ho! Come, play us La Clarice! La Clarice! La Clarice! La Clarice! La Clarice! La Clarice. Yeah. La Clarice. Yeah. But once more, that foolish rhyme, I slaughter every man of you. Oh, Samson? Yes, Samson. Will you lend your jawbone, sir? Outrageous! Scandalous! Tis most annoying! Fair good sport! Silence! Oh, oh, you have no authority no. here, sir! No! Oh, yeah. Yo! No! I, oh, no. on Flurry, uh, come back! I order silence all and challenge the whole pit collectively. I write your names. Approach, young heroes, here! Each in his turn. I cry the numbers out. Now, which of you will come to ope the list? You, sir? No? You? No? The first duelist shall be dispatched by me with honours due. Let all who long for death hold up their hands. Modest. Ah, you fear to see my naked blade. Not one name? Not one hand? Good, I proceed. The theatre's too full, congested. I would clear it out. If not, mm, the knife must act. <laughs> I will clap my hands thrice, full moon, and the third clap, eclipse yourself. One. Stay. He stays. He goes. He stays. Two. I think we're up wisest. Three. <laughs> coward. Oh, coward. come on. Coward. Coward. Show him what you're made of. Go for the orator. Ah, oh, here's Bellarose. My noble lords. No, Chaudelet. Chaudelet. Chaudelet, please, Chaudelet. come, please. Chaudelet, no. Perhaps. Bravo. 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 Excellent. The tragedy in whom you all love felt. Coward. 
was obliged to go. Come back! No. Uh oh. Yes. 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 Pray, sir, for what reason, say, hit you, Montfleury? Youthful gander. No, I have no. I have two reasons. Either will suffice. Primo, an actor villainous who mouths and heaves up like a bucket from a well. The verses that should bird-like fly. Secundo, that is my secret. Shameful, you deprive us of the Chloris. I must insist. Old mule, the verses of old Barrow are not worth a doit. I'm glad to interrupt. Dare you? Oh, my dear, how dares he? Barrow's a genius. We must give back the entrance fees. Bell Rose, you make the first intelligent remark. Would I read Thespis sacred? Would I rend Thespis sacred mantle? Nay! Catch the purse I throw and hold your peace. At this price, you've authority to come each night and stop Clarice, sir. Even if you chase us in a pack. <laughs> Get you all gone at once. Tis mad. Oh, what a waste of an evening. The actor Montfleury, tis shameful. Why, he's protected by the Duke of Kendall. Have you a patron? No. No patron? None. What, no great lord to shield, with, shield you with his name? No, I've told you twice, must I repeat? No, no protector. A protectress? Here. But you must leave this town? Well, that depends. The Duke has a long arm. But not so long as mine when it is lengthened out as thus. You think ah. not to contend? Tis my idea. But. Show your heels, now! But I... Don't tell me why you stare at my nose. I... Uh... <laughs> tell me, what there is there strange? Your grace mistakes. How now? Is soft and dangling like a trunk? I never... <laughs> is it crooked like an owl's beak? I... Do you see a wart upon the tip? Nay! Or a fly that takes the air there? What is there to stare at? Oh... What do you see? But I was careful not to look, and knew better. Oh, why not look at it, Anna, if you please? I was... Uh, oh, it disgusts you. Sir! It's you. Unwholesome seems to you. Sir! Or its shape. No, on the contrary. Why then, that air disparaging. Perchance you think it large. No, small, quite small, minute. Minute! What now? Accuse me of a thing ridiculous. Small, my nose! Oh, heaven help me! Tis enormous! Old flathead, empty-headed monster meddler. Know that I am proud possessing such appendix. Tis well known a big nose is indicative of a sore, affable, and kind, and courteous, liberal, brave, just like myself, and such as you can never dare to dream yourself. Rascal contemptible! For that witless face that my hand soon will come to cough is all as empty of pride, of aspiration, of feeling, poetry, of godlike spark, of all that appertains to my big nose, as what my boot will shortly come and kick. Help! Call the guards! Take notice, boobies all, who find my visage's center ornament a thing to jest at. That is my want, and if the jest is noble, ere we part, to let him taste my steel and not. Oh, my... But he becomes a nuisance. Waggerer. Will no one put him down? No one. But wait, I'll treat him to one of my quips. See here, sir, your nose is... Hmm. It is very big. Very? Ha! Is that all? What do you mean? Ah, uh, no, young blade. That was a trifle short. You might have said at least a hundred things by varying the tone. Like this, suppose. Aggressive. Sir, if I had such a nose, I'd amputate it. 
friendly. When you sup, it must annoy you dipping in your cup. You need a drinking bowl of special shape. Descriptive. A tis a rock, a peep, a cape, a cape full sooth. Tis a peninsula. Curious. How serves that oblong capsula? For scissor sheath or to part to hold your ink. Gracious, you love the little birds, I think. I see you've managed with fond research to find their tiny claws a roomy perch. <laughs> Truculent, when you smoke your pipe, suppose that the tobacco smoke spouts from your nose. Do not the neighbours, as the fumes rise higher, cry terror struck. The chimney is a fire! Consider it. <clears throat> Take care, your head bowed low by such a weight, lest head or heels you go. Tender, pray. Get a small umbrella made, lest its bright colour in the sun should fade. Pedantic. <clears throat> the beast Aristophanes, named Hippocanaphlemenemes, must have possessed just such a solid lump of flesh and bone beneath his forehead's bump. Cavalier. The last fashion, lit friend, that hook to hang your hat on, tis a useful crook. Emphatic. No wind or majestic nose can give thee a cold, save when minstrel blows. Dramatic. <clears throat> when it bleeds, what a red sea. Admiring. Save for a sign for a perfumery lyric. Is this a conch, a triton, you? Simple. What is that monument on view? Rustic, that thing a nose. Mary, come up, tis a dwarf, pumpkin, or a prize turnip. Military. Point against cavalry. Practical. Put it in a lottery. Assuredly, twould be the biggest prize, or parroting Pyramus's size. Behold the nose that mars the harmony of its master's fizz, blushing its treachery. Such, my dear sir, is what you might have said had you wit of the letters or the least jot. But, oh, most lamentable man of wit, you never had an atom. And of letters, you have three letters only. They spell ass. And you had the necessary wit to serve me and all the pleasantries I quote before this noble audience. Even so, you would not have been left to utter one, nay, not the half or quarter of such jests. I take them from myself, all in good bond, but not from any other man that breathes. Come away, Viscount. But uh, hear his arrogance. A country lout who, who has got no gloves, who goes out without sleeve knots, ribbons, lace. Oh, true, my elegances are within. I do not prank myself out puppy-like. My toilet is more thorough, if less gay. I would not sally forth, a half-washed out a front upon my cheek, a conscience yellow-eyed bilious from its sodden sleep. A ruffled honor, scruples grind and dull. I show no bravery of shining gems. Truth, independence are my fluttering plumes. Tis not my form I lace to make me slim, but brace my soul with efforts as with stays covered with exploits, not with ribbon knots. My spirit is bristling high like your mustaches. I, traversing the crowds and chattering groups, make truth ring bravely out like clash of spurs. Uh, but, sir. I wear no gloves, and what of that? I had one, remnant of an old worn pair, and knowing not us what to do with it, I threw it in the face of some young fool. Base scoundrel, a rascally flat-footed lout. Uh, and? And I, Cyrano Savignan Hercule de Bergerac? Ha! Ha ha ha! Buffoon. Aye, aye! <laughs> oh, what on earth is the fellow saying now? Oh, it must be moved. It's getting stiff. I vow this comes of leaving it in an idleness. I. What ails you? The cramp, the cramp in my sword. Good. You shall feel a charming little stroke. Poet. I, poet, sir, in proof of which, while we fence, presto, all extempore, I will compose a ballad. <laughs> a ballad? Be like you know not what a ballad is. Uh, but... No, then the ballad should contain three eight-versed couplets. Oh. And an envoy of four lines. You. And I'll make one while we fight and touch you at the final line. No. No? The duel in Hotel of Burgundy, fought by de Bergerac and a good for naught. What may that be, and if you please? The title. 
Wait, well, I choose my rhymes. I have them now. Mm. I gaily doff my beaver low and freeing my hand and heel, my heavy mantle off, I throw and draw my polished steel. Graceful as Phoebus, round I wheel, alert as scaramouche. I word in your air, sir, sir Spark, I steal at the envoy's end, I touch. Ha! Better for you had lain low at skewered my cock in the heel, in the heart your ribbon blew below, in the hip and make you kneel. Oh, for the music of clashing steel! What now? I hit not much, twill be in the paunch, the stroke I steal, when at the envoy I touch. Oh, for a rhyme, for a rhyme in earth. You wiggle, starch white my eel. A rhyme, a rhyme, the, the white feather you show. Tack, I parry. The white feather you show. Tack, I parry the point of your steel, the point you hope to make me feel. I ope the line, now clutch your spits, your skull and show your zeal. At the envoy's end, I touch. Envoy. Prince, pray heaven for your soul's wheel. I move a pace low and such. Cut all, faint! What ho! You reel? At the envoy's end, I touch. Bravo! 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 Thank you. Bravo. 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 Um, a marvel. A novelty. A madman. Sir, permit. Not could be finer. I am a judge, I think. I stamped in faith to show my admiration. Mm. Who, who is that gentleman? Why, D'Artagnan. Uh, a word with you. Mm. Well, let, wait, let the rabble go. May I stay? Without doubt. Oh, oh no. Oh, dear. Oh, no. We hoop flurry. Seek transit. Sweep, close all, but leave the lights. We sup, but later on we must return for a rehearsal of tomorrow's farce. You do not dine, sir? No. Because? Because I have no money. How? <laughs> Bag of crowns? Paternal bounty in a day thou art sped. How live the next month? I have nothing left. Folly. What a graceful action, think. Hmm. Sir, my heart mislikes to know you fast. See, all you need, serve yourself. Gentle child, although my Gascon pride would else forbid to take the least bestowal from your hands, my fear of wounding you outweighs that pride and bids accept. <laughs> a trifle, these few grapes, mm. 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 Nay, but this bunch, a glass of water fair, and half a macaroon. <laughs> what foolery. Take something else. I take your hand to kiss. Thank you, kind sir. Good night. Ah, uh, now, talk. I listen. Dinner. Dessert, wine, so, and now to table. Ah, I was hungry, friend. Nay, ravenous, you said. These fops would be belligerent. Will, if you heed them only, turn your head. Ask people of good sense if you would know the effect of your fine insolence. Enormous. <laughs> the cardinal. The cardinal was there? And must have thought it. Original, in faith. It, but. He's an author. Twill not fail to please him that I should mar a brother of his play. You make too many enemies by far. How many think you I made tonight? Forty, no less, not counting ladies. Mm, count. Montfleury first, the bourgeois, then de Guiche, the Viscount, Barrow, the Academy. Enough! I am overjoyed! Ah. But these strange ways, where will they lead you at the end? Explain your system. Come. I was in a labyrinth, was lost, too many different paths to choose. I took... Which? Oh, by far the simplest path. Decided to be admirable in all. So be it. But the motive of your hate to Montfleury, come, tell me. 
This Selenus, rude and coarse, still deems himself a peril, a danger to the love of lovely ladies, and while he sputters out his actor's part, makes sheep's eyes at the boxes. Goggling frog, I hate him since the evening he presumed to raise his eyes to hers. Messine, I saw a slug crawl, slavering all flowers, petals. How now? What can it be? that I should love. <laughs> I love. And may I know? You never said. Come now, but thank you. The fond hope to be beloved, even by some poor graceless lady, is by this nose of mine bereft me. This lengthy nose, which go where'er I will, pokes yet a quarter mile ahead of me. But I may love. And who? Because fate's degree, I love the fairest, how were it otherwise? The fairest? Aye, the fairest of the world, most brilliant, most refined, most golden-haired. Who is this lady? She's a danger mortal. All unsuspicious, full of charms unconscious, like a sweet perfumed rose, a snare of nature, within whose petals Cupid lurks in ambush. He who has seen her smile has known perfection, instilling into trifles grace essence, divinity into every careless gesture, not Venus herself can mount her conch blown seaward and as she can step into her chaise, a porter, nor die on fleet across the woods, spring flowered, light as my lady of the stones of heaven. As <laughs> a pristy, all is clear. As spider webs. Your cousin, Madeline Robin. Fuck, sir. Well, the, so much the better. Tell her so. She saw your triumph here this very night. Look well at me. Then tell me, with what help this vile protuberance can inspire my heart? I do not lull me with illusions, yet at times I'm weak. In evening hours, dear I enter some fair pleasant, perfume sweet, with my poor ugly devil of an ears, I scent spring's essence. In the silver rays I see some knight, a lady on his arm, and think to saunter thus neath the moonshine, I were fain to have my lady too beside me. Thought soars to ecstasy, oh, sudden fall. The shadow of my profile on the wall. My friend. My friend, at times tis hard, tis bitter to feel my loneliness, mine own ill favor. You weep. Oh, never. Think how vilely suited a down this nose, a tear its passage tracing. I. Never will. Well, of myself, I'm master. Let the divinity of tears, their beauty, be wedded to such common, ugly grossness. Nothing more solemn than a tear sublimer, and I would not, by weeping, turn to laughter the grave emotion that a tear engenders. Never be sad. What's love? A chance of fortune. Look, I, a Caesar, to woo Cleopatra. Your courage and your wit. The little maid who offered you refreshment even now, her eyes did not abhor you. You saw well. True. Well, how then? I saw Roxanne herself was death pale as she watched the duel. Pale? Her heart, her fancy are already caught. Put it to the touch. She may mock my face. That is the one thing on this earth I fear. Sir, someone asks for you. Go on, her duena. I was bid ask you where a certain lady could see her valiant cousin, but in secret. <laughs> see, see me. I, sir, she has somewhat to tell. Somewhat? I, private matters. Oh my God. Tomorrow, at the early blush of dawn, we go to hear Mass at St. Roche. My God. After, what place for a few minutes' speech? Where? Uh, but, oh, my God. Say. <laughs> I, I, I reflect. <laughs> Where? Uh, the, the, the pastry house of Rajano. 
Where lodges he? The Rue... Uh, uh, gold. Uh, Saint Honore. Good. Be you there at seven. Without fail. A rendezvous. From her. You're sad no more. <laughs> Let the world go burn. She knows I live. Now you'll be calm, I hope. Calm. Aye, now, calm. <laughs> I'll be frenetic, frantic, raving mad. Oh, for an army to attack a host. I've ten hearts in my breast. A score of arms, no dwarves to cleave, and twain, no giants now. Tyranno. Well, what now? A lusty thrush they're bringing you. Linier, what has chanced? He seeks you. He dare not go home. Why not? The letter Linier. This letter warns This letter me. warns me. This letter warns me that a hundred men, revenge that threatens me, uh, that song, you know, uh, the Port de Nessel, uh, to get to my own house, I must pass there. I dare not. Uh, give me leave to sleep tonight beneath your roof. Allow- A hundred men to sleep beneath your own, in your own bed. But- Take the lantern, let us start. I swear that I will make you to your bed tonight myself. Follow! Some stay behind as witnesses. A hundred. Less tonight would be too few. But why embroil yourself? A brat who scolds. And that worthless drunkard. Wherefore? For this cause, this wine barrel, this case of Burgundy did on a day in action full of grace. As he was leaving the church, he saw his love take holy water. He, who is afeard at water's taste, ran quickly to the stoop and drank it all to the last drop. Indeed, that was a graceful thing. Aye, was it not? But why a hundred men against one poor rhymer? March! Gentlemen, when you see me charge, bear me no sucker, none, whate'er the odds. Well, I shall come and see. Come then, come all, the doctor, Isabel, Leander, come, for you shall add in a motley swarm the farce Italian to the Spanish drum. Bravo! Excellent! Mantle, quick. Oh, bravo, bravo. Bravo. bravo! I heard! Bravo. Come! Bravo. Here's the march, gentlemen of the band. Brave officers. Next, women in costume. And 20 paces on, I all alone. Beneath the plume that glory lends herself to deck my beaver, proud as Scipio. One, two, three. Porter, open wide the doors. Ah! Parry, wrapped in night. Half nebulous. The moonlight strings all the blue shadow roofs, a lovely frame for this wild battle scene. Beneath the vapors floating scarves, the sun trembles mysterious like a magic mirror. And shortly you shall see what we shall see. To the port! port. To, to the port in L! Aye, to the port in L! Did you not ask, young lady, for what cause against this rhyme of five score men were sent? was that they knew him for a friend of mine. Ha! End of act one. Act two. I don't see two. Fruits in nougat. Custard. Peacock. Rizal. Peach jelly. Aurora's silver rays begin to glint e'en now on the copper pans, and thou, O oh Ragano, must perforce stifle in thy breast the god of song. Anon shall come the hour of the lute. Now tis the hour of the oven. You, make that sauce longer. Tis too short. How much too short? Three feet. Well, what means he? The tart. The pie. My muse, retire, lest thy bright eyes be reddened by the faggot's blaze. 
You've put the cleft of the lobes in the wrong place. Know you not that the caesura should be between the hemistitches. To this palace of paste, you must add the roof. And you, as you put on your lengthy spit, the modest fowl and the superb turkey, my son, alternate them as the old mayor loved so well to alternate his long lines of verse with the short ones. Thus shall your roasts in strophes turn before the flame. Master, I bethought me erewhile of your tastes and made this, which will please you, I hope. A liar! Tis a brioche pastry. With conserved fruits. The strings, see, are of sugar. Go, drink my health. My wife, bustle, pass on, and hide that money. Is it not beautiful? It's passing silly. Thanks, good, I thank you. Heavens, my cherished leaves, the poems of my friends, torn, dismembered to make bags for holding, biscuits and cakes. Oh, tis the old tale again, Orpheus and the Bacchanals. Am I not free to turn at last to some use of the sole thing that your wretched scribblers of halting lines leave behind them by way of payment? Groveling ant, insult not the divine grasshoppers, the sweet singers. Before you were the sworn comrade of all that crew, my friend, you did not call your wife ant and bacante. To turn fair verse to such a use. Faith, tis all, tis all it's good for. Pray then, madam, to what use would you degrade prose? What would you, little ones? Three pies. See, hot and well browned. It's you, sir. Will you wrap them up for us? Alas, one of my bags. Ulysses, thus, on leaving, not that, not that one. Thy gold lock, Phoebus. Ne no, not that one. What are you dallying for? Here, here, here. The sonnet to Phyllis. Oh, but tis hard to part with it. By good luck, he has made up his mind at last. Phyllis! On that sweet name, a smear of butter? Phyllis! <sighs> what? What's the o'clock? Six o'clock. <sighs> In one hour's time. <laughs> Bravo! I saw... Well, what saw you then? Your combat! Which? That in the Burgundy Hotel, Faith! Ah! The duel. Aye, the duel in verse. He can talk of not else. Well, oh, good. Let be. <laughs> at the envoy's end, I touch... At the envoy's end, I touch... Tis fine, fine! At the envoy's end, I... <laughs> uh, what hour is it now, Rajna? Uh, five minutes after six, I touch. <laughs> oh, to write a ballad. What's wrong with your hand? No, um, a slight cut. Have you been in some danger? None in the world. Methinks you speak not the truth in saying that. Did you see my nose quivering when I spoke? Faith, it must have been a monstrous lie that should move it. <clears throat> I wait for someone here. Leave us alone and disturb us for naught, and it were not for crack of doom. But tis impossible. My poets are coming. Oh, I, and for the first meal of the day. Prithee, take them aside when I shall make you sign to do so. Oh, what's a clock? Ten minutes after six. <sighs> uh, a pen, a pen. Here, a swan's quill. Uh, all right. Uh, what day? Who, who's that? It is a friend of my wife, a terrible warrior. At least he says so himself. <clears throat> Hush. I will write, fold it, give it her, and fly! Coward! But strike me dead if I dare to speak to her. I even one single word. What time is it? A quarter after six. A single word of all those here, here, the writing, tis easier done. Go to, I will write it, that love letter. Oh, I have writ it and rewrit it in my own mind, so oft that it lies there ready for pen and ink. And if I lay but my soul by my letter sheet, tis not to do, but to copy from it. 
Here they come, your mud bespattered friends. Brother in art! Dear brother. High soaring eagle among pastry cooks. Mary, it smells good here in your eye. <laughs> Is it Phoebus' own rays that thy roasts turn? Ah, uh, how quick a man feels at his ease among them. We were stayed by the mob. They are crowded all round the Port de Nel. Eight bleeding brigand carcasses strew the pavements there, all slit open with sword gashes. Eight. There's only seven. Know you who might be the hero of the fray? Not I. And you know you? Maybe. I love thee. Was one man, say they all, I swear to it, one man who, single-handed, put the whole band to the rout. It was a strange sight, pikes and cudgels strewed thick upon the ground. And they were picking up hats all the way to the Croix de Ors. Sapristi, but he must have been a ferocious. Thy lips. Twas a parlous, fearsome giant that was the author of such exploits. And when I see thee come, I think for fear. What hast rhymed of late, Ragino? Who worships thee? No need I sign, since I give it her myself. I have put a recipe into verse. <laughs> Go to, let us hear these verses. It's cap is all one side. See how this gingerbread woos the famished rhymer with its almond eyes and its eyebrows of Angelica. We listen. How it laughs till its very cream runs over. This is the first time in my life that ever I drew any means of nourishing me from the liar. <clears throat> a recipe in verse. You are uh, breakfasting? And you dining, methinks. How almond tartlets are made. Beat your eggs up light and quick, froth them thick, mingle with them while you beat juice of lemon, essence fine, then combine the burst milk of almond sweet. Circle with a custard paste the slim waist of your tartlet molds, the top with a skillful fingerprint, nick and dint, round their edge, then drop by drop in its little dainty bed your cream shed. In the oven, place each mold, reappearing, softly browned, the renowned almond tartlets you behold. Exquisite. Exquisite. Delicious. 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 <laughs> Lulled by your voice, did you see how they were stuffing themselves? Oh, I, I see well enough, but I will never seem to look, fearing to distress them. Thus, I gain a double pleasure when I recite to them my poems. For I leave these poor fellows who have not breakfasted free to eat, even while I gratify my own dearest foible. See you? <laughs> Friend, I like you right well. Ho oh there, Lise! So this fine captain is laying siege to you. One haughty glance of my eye can conquer any man that should dare venture aught against my virtue. Pooh. Conquering eyes, methinks, or off conquered eyes. <laughs> But <laughs> I like Ragno well. And so, mark me, Dame Lees. I permit not that he be rendered a laughing stock by any. But a word to the wise. How now? Is this your courage? Why turn you not a jest on his nose? On his nose? Aye, aye, his nose. <clears throat> Hist. We, we shall be more private there. Hist. Hist. To read poetry, tis better here. Uh, let's take the cakes with us. Yes. yes. I see but a faint glimmer of hope, and I draw my letter. Okay, you can Enter! Go. Two words with you, Duena. Poor sir, and it like you. Are you fond of sweet things? Aye, I, I could eat myself sick of them. 
<laughs> Good. See you, these two sonnets of Monsieur de Ressant. I. Which I fill for you with cream cakes. <laughs> <laughs> what say you to the cake they call a little puff? If made with cream, sir, I love them passing well. Yeah, I plunge six for your eating into the bosom of a poem by Saint Amant. <laughs> and in these verses of Chaplin, I gather, I glide like a morsel. Stay, love you, hot cakes. I to the core of my heart. Pleasure me then. Go, eat them all in the street. But... And come not back till the very last crumb be eaten. <laughs> Blessed be the moment when you condescend, remembering that humbly I exist. To come, to meet me, and to say, to, to tell. Thank you, first of all. That dandy count whom you checkmate in that brave sword play last night, he is the man whom a great lord desirous of my favor. Ha, de Guiche! sought to impose on me for husband. Aye, husband, dupe husband, husband a la mode. But I fought, then happy chance, sweet lady, not for my ill favor, but for your favors fair. Confession next, but ere I make my shrift, you must be once again that brother friend whom I used to play by the lakeside. I would come each spring to Bergerac. Mind you the reeds you cut to make your swords. While well, you wove corn straw plates for your doll's hair. Those were the days of games. And of blackberries. In those days, you did everything I bid. Roxanne and her short frock was Madeline. Was I fair then? You were not ill to see. Oft times, with hands all bloody from a fall, you'd run to me, then aping mother ways, I, in a voice, would be severe, would chide, what is this scratch again that I see here? Oh, tis too much, what is this? No, let me see. At your age, what did you get that scratch? I, I got it playing at the Port de Nell. Give here. So soft, so maternal sweet. And tell me, while I bl wipe blood, away the blood, how many against you? Oh, a hundred, near. Come, tell me. No, let be. But you, come tell the thing just now. You dared not. Now I dare. The scent of those old days emboldens me. Yes, now I dare. Come on, listen, I am in love. But with one who knows not. Not yet. But who... If he knows not, soon shall learn. A poor youth who spends all his time has loved timidly from afar and dares not to speak. Leave your hand. Why, tis fever hot. But I have seen love trembling on his lips. Yeah. And to think of it, that he by chance, yes, cousin, is of your regiment. Ah. <laughs> is cadet in your own company. <laughs> On his brow, he bears the genius stamp. He is proud, noble, young, intrepid, fair. Fair? Why, what ails you? I uh, did nothing, tis, <laughs> it was scratch. <laughs> I love him, all is said, but you must know I have only seen him at the com comedy. How, you've never spoken? Eyes can speak. How know you then that he... Oh, people talk. Meet the limes, the palace royale, gossip chat. How's that me know? Uh, he's cadet. In the guards. His name? Baron Christian de Nivellet. How now? He is not of the guards. Uh, today, he is to join your ranks under Captain Carbon de Castel Jalos. Ah, how quick, how quick the heart has flared. Uh, but my poor child. Mm. The cakes are eaten. Monsieur Bergerac. 
Then read the verses printed on the bags. My poor child, you who love but flowing words, bright wit. What if he be a lout unskilled? No, his bright locks like de Fier's heroes. Ah, a well curled paint and witless tongue, perchance. No, I guess I feel his words are fair. All words are fair that lurk neath fair moustache. Suppose he were a fool. <laughs> then bury me. <laughs> Was it to tell me this you brought me here? I fail to see what use this serves, madame. Nay, I felt a terror here in the heart on learning yesterday that your Gascons of all your company and we provoke all beardless prigs that favor dares admit midst us pure Gascons. Pure heaven save the mark, they told you that as well. Uh, I think of how I trembled for him. Not causelessly. But when last night I saw you, brave, invincible, punish that dandy, fearless, hold your own against those brutes, I thought, I thought, if he whom all fear, all if he only would good i will befriend your little baron <laughs> you'll promise me that you will do this for me i've always held you as a tender friend i i then you will be his friend i swear and he shall fight no duels promise none you are kind cousin now i must be gone you have not told me of your last night's fray, but it must have been a hero fight. Bid him to write. How good you are. Aye. Aye. A hundred men against you. Now, farewell. We are great friends. Aye. Aye. Oh, bid him to write. You'll tell me all one day. A hundred men. Brave. How brave. <laughs> I have fought better since. And yes. Ah, here he is. Captain. Our hero, we heard all. 30 or more of my cadets are here. Oh, but. Come with me. They will not rest until they see you. Uh, no. <laughs> They're drinking opposite at the bear's head. I... Uh, no. He, he won't come. The hero's in the sulks. Oh, come on. They're running across the streets. <sighs> Gentlemen, are you all from Gascony? Oh. 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 Bravo. <laughs> Uh, Baron! Come, I must embrace you. <clears throat> Baron! Baron! Him all in turn. Baron, Baron, I beg. Are you all barons, sirs? Aye, yes, sure. Aye, everyone. Everyone. all of us. Is it true? Aye, why could you build a tower with nothing but our cornets, my friend? They're looking for you. Here's a crazy mob led by the men who followed you last night. What? Have, have you told them where to find me? Yes. And Roxanne? Gosh! <laughs> Lovely oh, shop! Oh. Invaded! They break uh, all! Zero. Magnificent! My, uh, <laughs> zero no. My friend! It seems that yesterday I had not all these friends. <laughs> Success! <laughs> My friend! Thou, but no. Thou, Mary, thou. Uh, pray, when did we herd swine together, you and I? <laughs> I would present you, sir, to some fair dames who in my carriage yonder. Ah, and who will first present you, sir, to me. What's wrong? Shh. Few details? No. Tis Theophrast, Renaudé of the Court Gazette. Who cares? This paper, but is of great importance. They say it will be an immense success. 
Sir? What, another? Pray permit I make a pentacrostic on your name. Pray, sir. And enough, enough. <sighs> Here is Monsieur de Guiche. He comes from the Marshal of Cassian. Who would express his admiration, sir, for your new exploit noised so loud abroad. Marshal is a judge of valor. He could not have believed the thing unless these gentlemen had sworn they had witnessed it. With their own eyes. But you... But you suffer before this rabble. I... <laughs> mm. Wait. You shall see. In feats of arms already your career abounded. You serve with those crazy pates of Gascons? Aye, with the cadets. With us! Ah, uh, <laughs> all these gentlemen of haughty mien, are they the famous? No, no. Aye, Captain. Since all my companies assemble here, pray favor me. Present them to my lord. My lord de Guiche permits that I present the bold cadet of Gascony, of Corbin of Castel Jaleau, brawling and swaggering boastfully, the bold cadets of Gascony, spelting of armory, heraldry, the veins are brimming with blood so blue, the bold cadets of Gascony, of Corbin of Castel Jaleau, eagle eye and spindle shanks, fierce mustache and wolfish tooth, Slash and rabble scatter the ranks, eagle eyed and spindle shanks, with flaming feather their gaily pranks, hiding the holes in their hats forsooth, eagle eye and spindle shanks, fierce mustache and wolfish tooth. Pink your doublet and slit your trunk, are oh, their gentlest sobriquets. With fame and glory, the soul is drunk. Pink your doublet and slit your trunk, and brawl and skirmish they show their spunk. Give rendezvous and boil and pray. Pink your doublet and skill your trunk, are oh, their sober, gentlest sobriquets. What ho, cadets of Gascony, all jealous lovers are sport for you. Oh, women, dear divinity, what ho, cadets of Gascony, by... Scowling husbands quake to see, blow tartara and cry cuckoo. What ho, cadets of Gascony, husbands and lovers are game for you. Ah. Poet, tis the fashion of the hour. Will you be mine? No, sir. No man's. Last night your fancy pleased my uncle Richelieu. I'll gladly say a word to him for you. <laughs> Great heavens. I imagine you have rhymed five acts or so. Your play, your uh, Agrippine, you'll see it staged at last. Take them to my uncle. So I would. Um, he is a critic skilled. He may correct a line or two, at most. Impossible. My blood congeals to think that other hand should change a camel's dot. But when a verse approves itself to him, he pays a dear good friend. He pays less dear than I myself when a verse pleases me. I pay myself and sing it to myself. You're proud. Really? You've noticed that? The Toronto, this morning on the key. What strange bright feathered game we caught. The hats over the fugitives. Rich spoils. <laughs> <laughs> he who laid that ambush faith must curse and swear. Who was it? Oh, I myself. I charged them. Work too dirty for my sword to punish and chastise a rhymester sought. What to do with them? They're full of grease. A stew? Sir, pray be good enough to render them back to your friends. My chair there, quick I go. As to you, sirrah, have you read Don Quixote? I have, and doff my hat at the mad knight's errant's name. Mm, I counsel you to study the windmill chapter. Chapter the 13th. For when one tilts against windmills, it may chance. Till die against those who change with every breeze. That windmill sails may sweep you with their arm down in the mire. Or upward to the stars. <sighs> Gentlemen. Gentlemen. Here's a fine coil. 
Oh, scold away. At least you will agree that to annihilate each chance of fate exaggerates. Yes, I exaggerate. Ah. But for principle, example two, I think tis well thus to exaggerate. Oh, lay aside that pride of musketeer. Fortune and glory wait you. Aye, and then seek a protector, choose a patron out, and like the crawling ivy round a tree that licks the bark to gain the trunk support, climb high by creeping ruse instead of force. No, Gramercy, what? I, like all the rest, dedicate verse to bankers? Play buffoon and cringing hope to see, at last, a smile not disapproving on a patron's lips? Gramercy now. What? Learn to swallow toads with frame a weary climbing stairs, a skin grown grind and horny, here about the knees, an acrobat like teach my back to bend. No, Gramercy. Or double face and sly run with hair while hunting with the hounds an oily tongue to win the oil of praise flat to the great man to his very nose no gramercy steal salt from lap to lap a little great man in a great circle small or navigate with madrigals for sails blown gently windward by old lady sighs no gramercy bribely kindly edit bribe the kindly editors to spread abroad my verses gramercy Ooh, try to be elected as the Pope of tavern councils held by imbeciles. No, gramercy. Tour to gain reputation by one small sonnet instead of making many. No, gramercy. Or flatter sorry bunglers, be terrorized by every prating paper. Cease, say ceaselessly, oh, had I but the chance of fair notice in the Mercury. Gramercy, no. Grow pale. Fear. Calculate. Prefer to make a visit to a rhyme, seek introductions, draw petitions up. No, gramercy. And no, and no, and no again. But sing, dream, laugh, go lightly, solitary, free with eyes that look straight forward, fearless voice to cock your beaver just the way you choose. For yes or no, show fight or turn a rhyme. To work without any thought of gain or fame, to realize that journey to the moon, never to pen a line that has not sprung straight from the heart within. Embracing then, modesty, say to oneself, good my friend, be thou content with flowers, fruit, nay leaves, but pluck them from no garden but thine own. And then if glory come by chance your way, to pay no tribute unto Caesar, none, but keep the merit all your own. And short, disdaining tendrils of the parasite, to be content, if neither oak nor elm, not to mount high perchance, but mount alone. Alone, and if you will, but not with hand against every man. How in the devil's name have you conceived this lunatic idea to make foes for yourself at every turn? by dint of seeing you at every turn. Make friends and fawn upon your frequent friends with mouth wide, smiling, slit from ear to ear. I pass, still unsaluted, joyfully, and cry, what ho, another enemy! Lunacy. Well, what if it be my vice, my pleasure, displease, to love men hate me? A friend of mine, believe me, I march better neath the crossfire of glances inimical. How droll the stains one sees on fine lace doublets from goal of envy, of the poltroon's dro of the poltroon's drivel, the in the enervating friendship with it which enfolds you is like an open laced Italian cola floating around your neck in a woman's fashion. One is at ease thus, but less proud of the carriage. The forehead free from mainstay or coercion, bends here, there, everywhere, but I, embracing hatred, she lends, forbidding, stiffly fluted, the rough starched folds that hold their head so rigid, each enemy another fold, a gopher who adds constraint and adds a ray of glory for hatred, like the rough warm by the Spanish, grips like a vice, but frames you like a halo. Speak proud aloud and bitter. In my ear, whisper me simply this. She loves thee not. Hush. Cyrano, the story. In its time.
The story of the fray, twill lesson well, this timid young apprentice. Apprentice? Who? Uh, sickly northern greenhorn. Sickly? Hark! Monsieur de Nivellet, this in your ear. There is somewhat here one no more dares to name than to say rope to those sire who are hanged. What may that be? Be here. Do you understand? Oh, tis the- Hush! Oh, never breathe that word unless you reckon with him yonder. Hark. He put two snuffling men to death in rage for the sole reason they spoke through their noses. And if you would not perish in your youth, oh, mention not the fatal cartilage. A word, a gesture, for the indiscreet his handkerchief may prove his winding sheet. Captain. Uh. Pray, what skills is it best to do to southerners who swagger. <laughs> Give them proof that one may be a northerner yet brave. I uh, thank you. Now the tale. The tale. The tale. The tale. The tale. Mm. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, I went all alone to meet the band. The moon was shining, clock like fool in the sky. When suddenly some careful clock right passed a cloud of cotton wool across the case that held this silver watch. And presto, hey, the night was inky black and all the quays were hidden in the murky dark. Gadzooks, one could see nothing further. Then one's nose. Who on God's green earth is that? It is a man who joined today. <clears throat> today? Yes, his name is the Baron de Neuvy. Good, it is well, uh, I, what said I? What you? It, 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 it was dark. Oh, um, all night I went uh, thinking for a knavish cause I may provoke some great man, some great prince who certainly could break my nose! My teeth. Who would break my teeth? And I, imprudent-like, was poking... My nose? My finger in the crack between the tree and bark. He may prove strong and wrap me... Over the nose. Over the knuckles and I. But I cried, forward, Gascon, dirty calls on, Cyrano. And thus I ventured on when from the shadow came. A crack of the nose. I parry it, find myself. Nose to nose? Heaven and earth! With a hundred brawling salts who stank. A nose full. Onions, brandy cups. I leapt out and well down. Nosing the wind. I charge, go two, impale one, run him through. One aims at me, path, then up Harry. Pip. Great God, out, all of you. The tiger wakes. Every man, out, leave me alone with him. We shall find him minced fine, minced into hash and a big pastry. I am turning pale and curl up like a napkin, limp and white. Let us be gone. You'll not leave a crumb. I die of fright to think what will pass here. Something too horrible. Embrace me now. Sir? You are brave. Oh, but... Nay. I insist. Pray, tell me. Come, embrace. I am her brother. Whose brother? Hers, the faith. Roxanne's. 
Oh, heavens! Her brother! Cousin, bro- cousin, brother, the same thing. And she has told you... Oh. She loves me! Say! Maybe. Oh, glad I am to meet you, sir. That may be called a sudden sentiment. I ask your pardon. True. He's fair. The villain. <laughs> ah, sir. If you but knew my admiration. But all those noses. Oh, I take them back. Roxanne expects a letter. Whoa, oh, the day. How? I am lost if I but ope my lips. Why so? I am a fool. Could die for shame. None is a fool who knows himself a fool. And you did not attack me like a fool. Bah! One finds battle cry to lead the assault. I have a certain military wit, but before women can but hold my tongue. Their eyes, true, when I pass, their eyes are kind. And when you stay, their hearts, methinks, are kinder. No, for I am one of those men, tongue-tied, I know it, who can never tell their love. And I, meseems, had nature been more kind, more careful when she fashioned me, had been one of those men who could well speak their love. Oh, to express one's thoughts with facile grace. To be a musketeer with handsome face. Roxanne is precious. I'm sure to prove a disappointment to her. Had I but such an interpreter to speak my soul. Eloquence! Where to find it? Yes. I lend, if if you lend me your handsome Victor charms blended, we make a hero of the romance. How so? I think you can repeat what things I daily teach your tongue. What do you mean? Roxanne shall never have a dissolution. Say, wilt thou that we woo her, double-handed? Wilt thou that we too woo her, both together? Feel'st thou passing from my leather doublet through thy laced doublet, all my soul inspiring? But Cyrano... Will you, will you, I say? I fear. Since by yourself you fear to chill her heart, will you, to kindle her heart to flame, wed into one my phrases and your lips? Your eyes flash. Will you? Will it please you so? Give you such pleasure? It, it would amuse me. It is an enterprise to tempt a poet. Will you complete me and let me complete you? You march victorious, I go in your shadow. Let me be wit for you. Be you my beauty. The letter that she waits for even now, I never can. See, here it is, your letter. What? Take it, look, it wants but the address. But I... Fear nothing. Send it, it will suit. But have you... Oh, we have our pockets full. We poets of love letters writ to Chloe's, Daphne's, creations of our noble, of our noddle heads, our lady loves, phantasms of our brains, dream fancies blown into soap bubbles. Come, take it and change feigned love words into true. I breathe my sighs and moans haphazard wise, call all these wandering love bones home to nest. You'll see that it, I was in these lettered lines, eloquent all the more, the less sincere. Take it and make an end. Were it not well to change some words, written haphazard wise, will it fit Roxanne? It will fit like a glove. But? Ah, credulity of love. Roxanne will think each word inspired by herself. My friend. Not here, the silence of the grave. I dare not look. Passes all. Ho ho! Oh, our demon is become a saint? Struck on one nostril, lo, he turns the other. Then we may speak about his nose henceforth. Ah, Lise, see here. Oh, heavens, what a stink. You, sir, without a doubt, have sniffed it up. What is the smell I notice here? Hello, heads. And <clears throat> act two. Act three. And then off she went with a musketeer. Deserted and ruined, too. 
I would make an end of all and so hanged myself. My last breath was drawn. Then in comes Monsieur de Bergerac. He cuts me down and begs his cousin to take me for a steward. Well, but how came it about that you were this thus ruined? Ah, uh, least loved the warriors and I loved the poets. What cakes there were that Apollo chanced to leave were quickly snapped up by Mars. Thus ruin was not long a coming. Roxanne, are you ready? They wait for us. I will, but put on a cloak. <clears throat> I will, but put me on a cloak. They wait us there opposite at Clawmire's house. She receives them all there today. The pressies, the poets, they read discourse on the tender passion. The tender passion? Aye, indeed. Roxana, and you come not down quickly, we shall miss the discourse on the tender passion. I come, I come. La 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 la. Serenade us? La 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 la. I tell you, they are demi semi quavers, demi semi fool. <laughs> you know them, sir, to distinguish between semi quavers and demi semi quavers is not every disciple of Gassendi a musician. What, tis you? <clears throat> tis I who come to serenade your lilies and pay my devoir to your roses. I'm coming down. How come these two virtuosi here? Tis for a wager I won of De Soucy. We were disputing a nice point in grammar. Contradictions raged hotly. Tis so! Nay, tis so! When suddenly he shows me these two long shanks, whom he takes about with him as an escort, and who are skillful in scratching loot strings with their skinny claws. I will wager you a day's music, says he, and lost it. Thus see you. I. <clears throat> Thus see you till Phoebus' chariot starts once again. These loot twangers are at my heels, seeing all I do, hearing all I say, and accompanying all with a melody. Twas pleasant at first, but if a, I begin to weary it, I'm weary of it already. Ho! Ho there, go! Go Sally Bob Fleury for me! Play a dance to him! Play a long time! And play out of two. <laughs> I have come, as is my wont nightly, to ask Roxanne whether, whether her soul's elected is ever the same, ever faultless. Oh, how handsome he is, how brilliant a wit, and how well I love him. Christian has so brilliant a wit. Brighter than even your own cousin. Be it so, with all my heart. <laughs> Methinks twere impossible that there could breathe a man on this earth skilled to say as sweetly as he all the pretty nothings that mean so much, that mean all. At times his mind seems far away and the muse says not. And then presto, he speaks bewitchingly, enchantingly. No, no. That is ill said, but lo, men are ever thus because he is fair to see. You would have it that he must be dull of speech. He hath an eloquent tongue in telling his love. In telling his love? Well, tis not simple telling, tis dissertation, tis analysis. How is he with the pen? Still better. Listen here. The more of my poor heart you take, the larger grows my heart. How you like those lines? Ooh. And thus goes on. And since come target, I must show for Cupid's cruel dart. Oh, if mine own you deign to keep, then keep me your sweetheart. Lord, first he has too much, then a no, not enough. How much heart does the fellow want? You would vex a saint, but tis your jealousy. What mean you? I, your poet's jealousy. Hark now, if this again be not tender sweet, 
My heart to yours sounds but one cry. If kisses fast could flee by letter, then with your sweet lips, my letters read should keep. If kisses should be writ with ink, if kisses fast could flee. <laughs> Those last lines are, mm, 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 they are poultry now. And this. Then you have his letters by heart? Every one of them. By all those that can be sworn. <laughs> it is flattering. <laughs> there are lines of a master. Come, nay. Aye. A master? A master. Good, be it so. Oh, shoot. Uh, here comes Monsieur de Guiche. In with you, to were best he see you not. It might perchance put him on the scent. Of my own dear secret. He loves me and is powerful. And if he knew, then all were lost. Marry, he could well deal a death blow to my love. Good, good. I was going out. I come to take my leave. Whither go you? To the war. Ah. I tonight. Oh. I am ordered away. We are to besiege Arras. Ah, to besiege. Aye. My going moves you not, meseems. Nay. I'm grieved to the core of the heart. Shall I can behold you? When? It, I know not. Had you heard you that I am named commander? Bravo. Of the guard regiment. What? The guards? Aye, where serves your cousin, the swaggering boaster. I will find a way to revenge myself on him at Arras. Uh, what mean you, the guards go to Arras? <laughs> Thank you, is it not my own regiment? Christian. What ails you? Uh, I am in despair. The man one loves at war? You say such sweet words to me. Tis the first time, and just when I must quit you. Thus you would feign revenge for your grudge against my cousin? My fair lady is on his side. Nay, against him. Do you see him often? But very rarely. He is ever to be met now in company with one of the cadets, one new, new villain, villa... Of high stature? Fair-haired. Aye. A red-headed fellow. A handsome. What? But dull witted. One would think so to look at him. How mean you to play your revenge on Cyrano? Perchance you think to put him in the thick of the shots? Nay, believe me, that would be a poor vengeance. He would love such a post better than aught else. I know the way to wound his pride far more keenly. What then? Tell. If, when the regiment marched to Arras, he were left here with his beloved boon companions, the cadets, to sit cross-armed so long as the war lasted, there is your method. Would you enrage a man of his kind, cheat him of the chance of mortal danger, and you punish him right fiercely? Oh, woman, woman, who but a woman had ever survived so subtle a trick? See you not how he will eat out his heart. While his friends gnaw their thick fists, for they are deprived of the battle. So are you best revenged? You love me then a little? I would fain, seeing you thus espouse my cause, Roxanne, believe it a proof of love. Tis a proof of love. Here are the marching orders. They will be sent instantly to each company, except this one. But it is that of the cadets, this I keep. Now, Cyrano, <laughs> his love of battle. So you can play tricks on people. You love all ladies. Sometimes. Oh, but how I love you. To distraction, listen, tonight. True, I ought to start, but how leave you now that I feel your heart is touched? Hard by in the Rue d'Orlan is a convent founded by Father Athanasius, the syndic of the Capuchins. True that no layman may enter, but 
I can settle that with the good fathers. Their habit sleeves are wide enough to hide me in. Tis they who serve Richelieu's private chapel, and from respect to the uncle, fear the nephew. All will deem me gone, I will come to you masked. Give me leave to wait till tomorrow, sweet lady fanciful. But of this be rumored, your glory. Ah. But the siege, Aris? The will take its chance. Grant but permission. No. Give me leave. It were my duty to forbid you. Ah. Uh, you must go. It's you hear. I would have you heroic, Antony. Oh, heavenly word. You love, then, him? For whom I trembled. I go, then. Are you content? Yes, my friend. <sighs> yes, my friend. Not a word of what I have done. Serena would never pardon me for stealing his fighting from him. Cousin, we are going to Clemere's house. Uh, Alcandre and Lisamon are to discourse. Yes, but my little finger tells me we shall miss them. You are a pity to miss some shapes. Oh, see, <laughs> the knocker is muffled up. So they have gagged that metal tongue of yours, little noisy one, lest it should disturb the fine orders. <laughs> Let us enter. If Christian comes, as I feel sure he will, bid him wait for me. Listen, what mean you to question him on, as is your want tonight? Oh. Well, I say. But you will be mute? Mute as a fish. I shall not question him at all, but say, give rein your fancy. Prepare not your speeches, but think the thoughts as they come. Speak to me of love and speak splendidly. Very good. But secret. Secret. Not a word. A thousand thanks. Lest he prepare himself. <laughs> no, no, no. Secret. Christian! I know all that is needful. Here's occasion for you to deck yourself with glory. Come, lose no time, put away those sulky looks. Come to your house with me. I'll teach you. No. Why? I will wait for Roxanne here. How? Crazy? Come quick with me and learn. No, no, I say. I am a weary of these borrowed letters, borrowed love makings, thus to act a part and tremble all the time. It was well enough at the beginning. Now I know she loves. I fear no longer. I will speak myself. Mercy. And how now you, I cannot speak. I am not such a fool when all is said. I've by your lessons profited. You'll see I, sh you'll see I shall know how to speak alone. The devil. I know at least to clasp her in my arms. It is she. Serrano, no, leave me not. Speak for yourself, my friend, and take your chance. <sighs> you. Evening falls. Let's sit, speak on, I listen. Oh, I love you. <clears throat> I speak of love to me. I love thee. That's the theme, but vary it. I vary it. I love you so. Oh, without a doubt. And then, and then, I should be oh, so glad, so glad you would love me. Roxanne, tell me so. I hoped for cream, give me gruel. Uh, Say how love possesses you. Oh, utterly. Come, come, I'm not those tangled sentiments. Your throat, I kiss it. Christian! I love thee. Again? No, no, I, I, I love thee not. Tis, well? 
but but I adore thee. Oh. I I am grown stupid. And that displeases me. Almost as much as twould displease me if you grew ill favored. But rally your poor eloquence that's flown. I Yes, you love me, that I know. Adieu. Uh, oh, go not yet. I tell you. Uh, you adore me? I've heard it very oft. No, go away. But I would fain. Faith, oh. it is successful. Come to my aid. Not I. But I shall die unless at once I win back her favor. And her how can favor. I? And how can I, at once, of the devil's name, lessen you in... Oh, she is there. Her window. Oh, I shall die. Speak lower. I shall die. <laughs> the night is dark. <laughs> well. All can be repaired, although you merit it not. Stand there, poor wretch. Fronting the balcony, I'll go beneath and prompt your words to you. But... Hold your tongue. Oh! Oh! We've played the serenade you bade. We've played the serenade you bade to Montfleury. Go, 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 lurk and ambush there, and one at this street corner and one at that. And if a passerby should hear intrude, let play you a tune. What tune, sir? Happy if a woman comes for a man. Sad. Call her. Roxanne. Some pebbles. Wait a while. Who calls me? I. Who's that? Christian. Oh, you. I would speak with you. Good. Speak soft and low. No. You speak stupidly. Oh, pity me. No! You love me no more! You say, great heaven, I love no more, when I love more, and more. Hold. Tis a trifle better. I, a trifle. Ah, um, uh, love grew apace, Rock by the rocked beating. by the anxious beating of this poor heart, the cruel wanton boy which the cruel wanton boy took for a cradle. Took for a cradle. <clears throat> that is better. But right. on, if you deem that Cupid be so cruel, you should have stifled a baby loves in cradle. Ah, uh, madam, I essayed. Ah, uh, madam, I essayed. But all in vain. But all in vain. This newborn babe is a young... This newborn babe is young. Hercules. Haircuts. Hercules. Hercules. <clears throat> Still better. Thus he strangled in my heart. Thus he strangled in my heart. Serpents twain. The serpents twain. Pride and doubt. Pride and doubt. Well said. But why so faltering? Has mental palsy seized on your faculty imaginative? Give place. This wax is critical. <laughs> Today, uh, your words are hesitating. Night has come. In the dusk, they grope their way to find your ear. But my words find no such impediment. They find their way at once. Small wonder that. For tis within my heart they find their home. But think how large my heart, how small your ear, and... From fair heights descending, words fall fast, but mine must mount, madam, and that takes time. Me seems that your last words have learned to climb. With practice, such gymnastic grows less hard. In truth, I seem to speak from distant heights. True, fire above, at such a height were death, if a hard word from you fell on my heart. Uh, I will come down. No. <clears throat> Mount, then, on the bench. Uh, uh, no. <clears throat> How will you not? Uh, uh, stay a while. Uh, Tis sweet, the rare occasion when our hearts can speak, ourselves unseen, unseeing. Why unseen? 
Ah, it is sweet, half hidden, half revealed. You see the dark folds of my shrouding cloak, and I the glimmering whiteness of your dress. I but a shadow, you a radiance fair. Know you what such a moment holds for me, if ever I were eloquent. You were. Yet never till tonight my speech has sprung straight from my heart as now it springs. Why not? Till now I spoke haphazard. What? Your eyes have beams that turn men dizzy. But tonight, methinks, I shall find speech for the first time. Tis true. Your voice rings with a tone that's new. <clears throat> Aye, a new tone. In the tender, sheltering dusk, I dare to be myself for once, at last. What say I? I know not. Oh, pardon me, it thrills me. Tis so sweet, so noble. How? So novel? I, to be at last sincere, till, till now my chilled heart, fearing to be mocked. Mocked, and for what? For its mad beating eye. My heart hath clothed itself with witty words to shroud itself from curious eyes, impelled at times to aim at a star. I stay my hand, and fearing ridicule, call it a wild flower. A wild flower is sweet. Aye, but tonight, the star. <sighs> Never have you spoken thus before. If leaving Cupid's arrows, quivers, torches, we turn to seek for sweeter, fresher things, instead of sipping in a pygmy glass dull fashionable waters, did we try how the soul slakes its thirst and fearless draught by drinking from the river's flooding brim? But wit? If I had used it to arrest you at the first starting, now it would be an outrage, an insult to the perfumed night, to nature, to speak fine words that garnish vain love letters. Look up but at her stars. The quiet heaven will ease our hearts of all things artificial. I fear lest, midst the alchemy, we're skilled in the truth of sentiment, dissolve and vanish. The soul, exhausted by these empty pastimes, the gain of fine things, be the loss of all things. But wit, I say... In love tis crime, tis hateful, turning frank love into subtle fencing. At last the moment comes, inevitable. Oh, woe for those who never know that moment, when feeling love exists in us, ennobling each well-weighed word is futile and soul-saddening. Well, if that moment's come for us, suppose it. What words would serve you? All, 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 whatever, that came to me, even as they came. I'd fling them in a wild cluster, not a careful bouquet. I love thee. I am mad. I love. I stifle. Thy name is in my heart as in a sheep bell. And as I ever tremble, thinking of thee, ever the bell shakes, ever thy name ringeth. All things of thine I mind, for I love all things. I know that last year on the 12th of May month, to walk abroad one day, you changed your hair plates. I am so used to... Take your hair for daylight, that, like as when the eye stares on the sun's disk, one sees long after a red blot on all things. So when I quit thy beams, my dazzled vision sees upon all things a blonde stain imprinted. Why, this is love indeed. I true, the feeling which fills me terrible and jealous. Truly love, which is ever sad amid its transports. Love and yet strangely, not a selfish passion. I, but for your joy, would gladly lay mine own down, even though you would ne'er, never were to know it, never. If but at times I might, far off and lonely, hear some gay echo of the joy I brought you. Each glance of thine awakes in me a virtue, a novel, unknown valor. Dost thou begin, sweet, to understand? So late dost thou understand? Feel'st thou my soul here through the darkness mounting? Too fair the night, too fair the moment, that I should speak thus and that you should hearken. Too fair in moments when my hopes rose proudest, I never hoped such guerdon. Naught has left me but to die now. Have words of mine the power to make you tremble? 
thrown it there in the branches. I, like a leaf among the leaves, you tremble. You tremble. For I feel, and if you will it, or will it not, your hand's beloved trembling thrill through the branches down your sprays of jasmine. I, I, I am trembling, weeping, I am thine. Thou hast conquered all of me. Then let death come. Tis I, tis I myself who conquered thee. One thing but one I dare to ask. A kiss. What? What? You ask? I, <clears throat> fool, go to quack. Since, since she has moved thus, I will profit by it. My words sprang thoughtlessly, but now I see. Shame on me, I was too presumptuous. How quickly are you withdraw? Yes, I withdraw. Without withdrawing. Hurt my modesty? If so, the kiss I asked, oh, grant it not. Why? Silence, Christian! Hush! What whisper you? I chide myself, my too bold advances, said, Silence, Christian. <laughs> Hark, wait a while. Steps come. What? Neither man nor woman? Oh, uh, a monk. <clears throat> what do you, playing a Diogenes? Coming. Oh. I seek the house of Madame. Oh, play. Oh, play. Take him. Madeleine Robin. What would he? This way, straight on. I thank you, and in your intention will tell my rosary to its last bead. Good luck. My blessings rest upon your cow. <clears throat> Oh, win for me that kiss. No! Soon or late. Tis true, the moment of intoxication, of madness, when your mouth are sure to meet, thanks to your fair moustache and her rose lips, I fear it should come thanks to... <sighs> Still there? Uh, we spoke of a... Yes, the word is sweet. I see not why your lips should shrink from it. If the word burns it, what would the kiss do? Oh, let it not your bashfulness affright. Have you not all this time insensibly left badinage aside and unalarmed and glided from smile to sigh, from sigh to weeping, glide gently, imperceptibly, still onward, from tear to kiss, a moment's thrill, a heartbeat. Hush, hush. A kiss, when all is said, what is it? An oath that's ratified, a sealed promise, a heart of our claiming confirmation, a rose dart in the eye of adoration, a secret that to mouth not ear is whispered, brush of a bee's wing that makes time eternal, communion perfumed like the spring's wild flowers, the heart's relieving and the heart's outbreathing, when to the lips of the soul's flood rises, brimming. Hush, hush. A kiss, madam, is honorable. The queen of France to her most favorite lord did grant a kiss, the queen herself. What then? Buckingham suffered dumbly. So have I, adored his queen as loyally as I, was sad but faithful. So am I. And you are as fair as Buckingham. True, I forgot. Must I then bid thee mount to cull this flower? Mount! This heart breathing. Mount! This brush of a bee's wing. Mount! But I feel now as though it were ill done. This moment infinite. I'm blockhead mount. Oh, uh, uh, Roxanne. Mm. Mm. Strange pain that wrings my heart. The kiss loves feast so near. I, Lazarus, lie at the gate in darkness. Yet to me falls still a crumb or two from the rich man's board. I, tis my heart receives thee, Roxanne. Mine. For on the lips you press your kiss as well, the words I spoke just now, my words, my words. The sad air, happy air, the monk. Hola! Who is it? I, uh, 
I uh, I was uh, but passing by. He, 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 is Christian there? Sure enough. Mm. Good day, cousin. Cousin, good day. I'm coming. Mm. Mm. Back again? It is here, I'm sure of it. Madame Madeleine Robin. Why, you said Rolling. No, not I. B I N. Uh, what's it? A letter. What? Oh, it can boot but a holy business. Tis from a worthy lord. De Guiche. He dares. Oh, he will not importune me forever. I love you, therefore. Lady, the drums beat. My regiment buckles its harness on and starts. But I, they deem me gone before. But I stay. I have dared to disobey your mandate. I'm here in the convent walls, and I come to you tonight by this poor monk, a simple fool who knows not what he bears. I send this missive to apprise your ear. Your lips erewhile have smiled on me too sweet. I go ere I have seen them once again. I would be private, send each soul away, receive alone him, whose great boldness you have deigned, I hope to pardon ere he asks. He who is ever your, etc. Father, this is the matter of the letter. Lady, the Cardinal's wish is law, albeit it to be your unwelcome. For this cause, I send these lines to your fair ear addressed by a holy man, discreet, intelligent. It is our will that you receive from him in this house the marriage. Benediction, straight away this night. Unknown to all the world, Christian becomes your husband. Him we send, his aberrant your choice. Let be. Resign yourself, and this obedience will be by heaven well recomp recompensed. Receive fairly all assurance of respect from him who ever was and still remains, your humble and obliged, etc. Oh, worthy Lord. I knew not was to fear. It could be but holy business. Am I not apt at reading letters? Hmm. But this is horrible. Tis you? Tis I. I have but... not <sighs> overlooked the postscripts. See? 20 pistols for the convent. Oh, most worthy lord. Submit you? I look. I submit. Oh, keep De Guiche at bay. He will be here. Let him not enter till... I understand. What time need you to tie the marriage knot? A quarter of an hour. Go! Nice day. shake this atmosphere. What can that cursed friar be about? Devil, he knows my voice. Assume thou, Cyrano, to serve the turn, the accent of thy native Bergerac. Tis there, I see dim, this mask hinders me. What's this? Ah. Where fell that man from? Uh, uh, from the moon. From? Uh, where's the clock? He's lost his mind for sure. What hour? What country is this? What month? What day? But... I am stupefied. Sir. Like a bomb, I fell from the moon. Oh, come now. I say la moon. Good, good. Let it be so. He's raving mad. I say from the moon, I'm a no matter for. But. 
Last a hundred years, a minute since. I cannot guess what time that fall embraced that I was from saffron colored ball. Good, let me pass. Where am I? Tell the truth. Fear not of tell, oh spare me not. Where, where have I fallen like a shooting star? The fall was lightning quick. And no time to choose where I should fall. I know not where it be. Oh, tell me, is it on the moon or earth that my posterior weight has landed me? I tell you, sir, that- No, can it be I'm on a planet where men have dark, dark faces? What? Am I in Germany, a native you? mask of mine. Oh, in Venice? Ha! Or, or in Rome. A lady waits. Oh, I am in Paris. Oh, it was comical. You laugh? I laugh, but would get by. I have shot back to Paris. Come, pardon me, put on a bois. But the last water spout covered with ether, accident of travel, my eyes still full of stardust, and my spurs encumbered by the planet's filaments. Ha! Oh, my doublet. Ah, a comet's hair. Sir. In my leg. Ah, in my leg, there is a tooth. There is a tooth of the great bear. And passing Neptune close, I would avoid his trident point and fell, thus sitting plump right in the scales. My weight is marked, still registered up there in heaven. I swear to you that if you squeeze my nose, it would spout milk. Milk? From the Milky Way. Oh, go to hell. I fall, sir, out of heaven. Now, would you credit it that as I fell, I saw Sirius wears a nightcap? True. The other bear is still too smart to bite. I went through the lyre, but I snapped a cord. I mean to write the whole thing in a book. That small gold stars that wrapped up in my cloak, I carried safe away at no small risks. Will serve her asterisk in the printed page. I'll make an end. I want to. Oh, you are sly. Sir. You would warm all out of me. The way the moon is made, and if men breathe and live, it is rotan curcurbita. No, no, I want. Ha <laughs> ha, to know how I got up. Hark, it was by method all my own. He's mad. No, not for the stupid eagle of Regiomontos, nor for the timid pigeon of Arcatis, neither of those. Tis a fool, but a learned fool. No imitator I of other men. Six novel methods, all by this brain, invented. Six. First, with Nick, with body naked as your hand festooned about with crystal flecons, full or the tears of the early morning dew distills my body to the sun's fierce rays, expose it to let it suck me up as it draws, sucks the dew. Uh, that makes one. And then the second way to generate wind for my impetus to rarefy air in a cedar case by mirrors placed eco-shadowed eco-sahedron-wise. Two. 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 Or, for I have some mechanic skill, to make a grasshopper with springs of steel and launch myself by quick succeeding fires, salt Peter fed to the stars, pasture blue. Three. Yeah. Or, uh, since fumes have property to mount, to charge a globe with fumes sufficiently to carry me aloft. Well, that makes four. Or smear myself with marrow from a bull, since at the lowest point of zodiac, Phoebus well loves to suck that marrow up. Five. <sighs> Sitting on an iron platform, then to throw a magnet into the air. This is a method well conceived. The magnet flown, infallibly the iron will pursue. Then quick, Relaunch your magnet, and you thus can mount and mount on measured distances. Here are six excellent expedients. Which of the six chose you? Why none? A seventh. Astonishing. What was it? I will recount. This wild eccentric becomes interesting. <laughs> well. You against? Not I. The tides. In the witching hour when the moon woos the wave, I laid me fresh from a sea bath on the shore, and falling not to put head foremost, for the hair falls the sea water in its mesh, I rose in the air, straight, straight like an angel's flight, and mounted, mounted gently, effortless, when lo, a sudden shock. Then, then, oh, then, the court is gone, I'll hinder you no more. The very mouths 
The marriage vows are made. What? Am I mad? That voice, that, that nose. Cyrano. Cyrano. While we were chatting, they have plighted troth. Who? Heavens. You. He cunningly contrived. My compliments, Sir Apparatus Maker. Your story would arrest at Peter's Gate saints eager for their paradise. Note well the details. They, they would make a stirring book. I shall not fail to follow your advice. A handsome couple, son, made one by you. I bid your bridegroom, madam, fond farewell. Why so? Even now, the regiment departs. Join it. It goes to battle? Oh, without doubt. But the cadets go not. Oh, aye, they go. Here is the order. Baron, bear it, quickly. Christian. The wedding night is far, methinks. He thinks to give me pain of death by this. Oh. Once again, your lips. Come, come, enough. It is hard to leave her, you know not. I know. The regiment starts. Uh. I will try my best, but promise that I cannot. But swear that he should be pr prudent. Again, I'll do my best, but... In the siege, let him not suffer. All that men can do, I... That he shall be faithful. Doubtless, but... That he will write off. That... That I promise you. End of Act 3. Act 4. Tis terrible. <sighs> not a morsel left. Married. Curse under your breath. You will wake me. Hush. Sleep on. He who sleeps dies. But that is sorry comfort for the sleepless. What starvation? Oh, plague take their firing to awake my sons. Sleep on. <laughs> Devil. Again. Tis nothing, tis Cyrano coming back. Ventribue, who goes there? Her! Bergerac! Ventribue, who goes there? Bergerac, idiot! Heavens! Wounded? Oh, you know it has become their custom to shoot at me every morning and to miss me. This passes all, to take letters in each day's dawn, to risk. I promise he should write often. He sleeps, like our pale is. But how handsome still, despite his sufferings. If his poor little lady love knew that he is dying of hunger. Get you quick to bed. Nay, never scold, Lebret. I ran but little risk. I have found me a spot to pass the Spanish lines where each night they lie drunk. You should try to bring us back provision. A man must carry no weight who would get by there. But there will be surprise for us this night. The French will eat or die, if I mistake not. Oh, tell me. Nay, not yet. I am not certain. You will see. Disgraceful that we should starve while we're besieging. Alas, how full of complication is the siege of Arras. To think that while we are besieging, we should ourselves be caught in a trap and besieged by the Cardinal Infante of Spain. <laughs> if it were well done, if he were shoot be besieged in his own turn. I'm in earnest. Oh, indeed. To think you risk a life so precious for the sake of a letter, thankless one. Where are you going? Going to go write another. Rivi. Nourishing sleep, thou art at an end. I know well what will be their first cry. 
I am so hungry. I'm dying of hunger. Oh, up with you. Cannot move a limb. I nor can I. My tongue is yellow. The air of the season of the year is hard to digest. My cornet for a bit of Chester. If none can furnish to my gaster wherewith to make a pint of chili, I shall retire to my tent like Achilles. Oh, something, we're a buster crust. Cyrano? We're all dying. We're all dying. Come to my aid, you who have the quick art of, of art of quick retort and jest. Come, hearten them up. What are you crunching there? Pan and wad soaked in axle grease. Tis poor hunting here. I I've been after game and fish. Well, what have you brought? A pheasant, a carp, please come show us quick. A gudgeon and a sparrow. Tis more than can be borne. We will mutiny. Cyrano, come to my help. Wait, wait. What is wrong? Why drag your, your legs so sorrowfully? I have something in my heels which weighs them down. And what may that be? My stomach. So have I, Faith. It must be in your way. Nay, I am all the taller. My stomach's hollow. Faith, twill make a fine drum to sound the assault. Ha! That's a ringing in my ears. No, no, tis false. A hungry stomach hath no ears. Oh, to eat something, something oily. Behold your salad. What in God's name can we devour? The Iliad. The first minister in Paris has his four meals a day. To a courteous, and he sent you a few partridges. <laughs> and why not? With wine, too. A little burgundy. Richelieu, s'il vous plaît. He could send it by one of his friars. Aye, by his eminence, Joseph himself. I am have as ravenous as an ogre. Eat your patience, then. Always your pointed word. Aye, pointed words. I would fain die thus, some soft <laughs> summer eve making a pointed word for a good cause, to make a soldier's end by a soldier's sword, wielded by some brave adversary. Die on blood-stained turf, not on a fever bed, a point upon my lips, a point within my heart. I'm hungry. <sighs> All your thoughts of meal and drink. Bertrand, the fifer, you a shepherd once, draw from its double leathern case your fife. Play to these greeding, gosling soldiers. Play old country airs with plaintive rhythm recurring where lurk sweet echoes of the door home voices, each note of which calls like a little sister. Those airs slow, slow ascending as the smoke wreaths rise from the hearthstones of our native hamlets, the music strikes the ear like Gascon Patois. Your flute is now a warrior endurance, but on its stem, your fingers are a dancing, a bird-like minuet. Oh, flute, remember that flutes were made of reeds first, not laburnum. Make us a music pastoral days recalling the soul time of your youth in country pastures. Hark to the music lessons. Tis no longer the piercing of the paper can, but make his fingers the fruit of the woods. No more the call to combat. Tis now the love song of the wandering goat herds. Hark! Tis the valley, the wetlands, the forest, the sunburnt shepherd boy with scarlet beret. The dusk of evening on the Dorjon River. It is Gascony. Hark, Gascons, to the music. Makes them weep. Aye, for homelessness, for homesickness. A nobler pain than hunger. It is of the soul, not of the body. I am well pleased to see that pain change its viscera. Heartache is better than stomach ache. But you weaken their courage by playing thus on their heartstrings. I'll die. 
The hero that sleeps in Gaskin blood is ever ready to awaken them. It would suffice. You see? One roll of the drum is enough. Goodbye, dreams, regrets, native land, love. All that pipe called forth the drum has chased away. Oh, here comes Monsieur de Guiche. Ugh. Uh, a flattering welcome. We are sick to death of him. With his lace collar over his armor, playing the fine gentleman. As if one were linen over steel. It were good for a bandage had he boils on his neck. Another plotting quarter. His uncle's own nephew. For all that, a Gascon. Hey, false Gascon. Trust him not. Gaskins could never be crack brain, not more dangerous than a rational Gaskin. How pale he is. Oh, he is hungry, just like us poor devils. But us under his caress with its fine gilt nails, his stomach ache glitters brave in the sun. That does not seem to suffer either. Out with your cards, pipes and dice, and I shall read Descartes. Good day. Mm. He's green. Mm. He has nothing left but eyes. Here are the rebels. Aye, sirs, on all sides, I hear that in your ranks you scoff at me. At the cadets, these loutish, mountain-bred, poor country squires, and barons of Perigord, scarce find for me, their colonel, a disdain sufficient. Call me plotter, wily courtier. It does not please their mightiness to see a pointless collar on my steel curris. And they enrage because a man in sooth may be no ragged robin, yet a Gascon. Shall I command your captain to punish you? No. I am free. Moreover, will not punish. Ah. I have paid my company. Tis mine. I bow but to headquarters. And so, in faith, that will suffice. I can despise your taunts. Tis well known how I bear me in the war. At Bapon yesterday, they saw the rage with which I beat back the Count of Bouquois. Assembling my own men, I fell on his and charged three separate times. And your white scarf? Oh, you know the detail. Troth, it happened thus. While caracling to recall the troops for the third charge, a band of fugitives bore me with them close by the hostile ranks. I was in peril, capture, sudden death when I thought of the good expedient to loosen and let fall the scarf which told my military rank. Thus I contrived without attention waked to leave the foes and suddenly returning, reinforced with my own men to scatter them. And now, what say you, sir? I say that Henri Quatre had not by any dangerous odds been forced to strip himself of his white helmet plume. Rue succeeded, though. Oh, maybe, but one does not lightly abdicate the owner to serve as target to the enemy. Had I been present when your scarf fell low, our courage, sir, is of a different sort. I would have picked it up and put it off. Oh, I, another Gascon boast. A boast? <laughs> Lend it to me. I pledge myself tonight with it across my breast to lead the assault. Another Gascon vaunt. You know the scarf lies with the enemy upon the brink of the stream. The place is riddled now with shot. No one can fetch it hither. Here yeah, it is. I, I thank you. It will now enable me to make a signal that I had forborne to make till now. See you, yon man, down there, who runs? Tis a false Spanish spy who was extremely useful to my ends. The news he carries to the enemy are those I prompt him with. So in a word, we have an influence on their decisions. Scoundrel. It is opportune. What were we saying? Ah, I have news for you. Last evening, to victual us, the marshal did attempt a final effort. Secretly, he went to Dorlan, where the king's provisions be. But to return to camp more easily, he took with him a goodly force of troops. Those who attacked us now would have fine sport. Half of the army is absent from the camp. Aye, if the Spaniards knew it were ill for us, but they know nothing of it. Oh, they know. 
and they will attack us. Ah. For my false spy came to warn me of their attack. He said, I can decide the point for their assault. Where would you have it? I will tell them tis the least offended. They'll attempt you there. I answered, good. Go out of the camp, but watch my signal. Choose the point from whence it comes. Make ready! It'll be in an hour. Good. Time must be gained. The marshal will return. How gain it? Oh, you will all be good enough to let yourselves be killed. Vengeance. <laughs> I do not say that. If I loved you well, I had chosen you and yours, but as things stand, your courage yielding to no core of the palm, I serve my king and serve my grudge as well. And that then I express my gratitude. Oh, I know you love to fight against five score. You will not now complain of paltry odds. We shall add to the Gascon coat of arms with its six bars of blue and gold. One more! The blood red bar that was a missing there. Christian! Roxanne. Alas. At least I'd send my heart's farewell to her in a fair letter. I had suspicion it would be um, today and had already writ. Show. Will you? I. Hold. What? This little spot. A spot? A tear. Poets, at last, by dint of counterfeiting, take counterfeit for true. That is the charm. This farewell letter, it was passing sad, and I wept myself in writing. Wept? Why? <laughs> Death itself is hardly terrible, but now to see her more. That is death's sting. For I shall never, we shall, I mean you. Give me that letter. Who goes there? What is it? It is a carriage. In the camp? It enters, it comes from the enemy. Fire? No. The coachman cries. What does he say? On the king's service. The king's service? How? Uncover all. The king's. Draw up in line. A salute. Lower the carriage steps. Good day. Oh, the king's service? You? I? King loves. What other king? Great God. Why have you come? The speech. This too long. Why? I will tell you all. My God, dare I look at her? You cannot remain here. But I say yes. Who will push a drum hither for me? No, thank you. My carriage was fired at by patrol. Look, would you not think twas made of a pumpkin like Cinderella's chariot in the tail? And the footman out of rats? Good morrow, Christian. You look not merry, any of you. Uh, know that tis a long and road to get to Aris. Cousin delight. But how, in heaven's name? How found I the way to the army? It was simple enough, for I had but to pass on and on, and as far as I saw the country laid waste. Uh, what horrors there were. Had I not seen, then I could never have believed it. Well, gentlemen, if such be the service of your king, I would fainer serve mine. But to sheer madness, where in the fiend's name did you get through? Where? Through the Spanish lines. For its subtle craft, give me a woman. But how did you pass through their lines? Faith, that must have been a hard matter. None too hard. I but drove quietly forward in my carriage, and when some hidalgo of haughty mane would have stayed me, lo, I showed at the window my sweetest smile, and the seniors, being, with no disrespect to you, the most gallant gentleman in the world, I passed on. True, that smile is a passport. 
But you must have been asked frequently to give an account of where you were going, madame. The very fiercest Spaniard of them all would gravely shut the carriage door and, with a gesture that a king might envy, make signal to his men to lower the muskets leveled at me, then, with melancholy, but with all very graceful dignity, his hand... Indeed, you must. But wherefore must I? Tis that. In three quarters of an hour... Or four. The best. You might... You are going to fight? I stay here. No, 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 no. They shall yeah. kill us both together. Why do you look at me thus? I will tell you all. Tis a post of mortal danger. Mortal danger. Proof enough, for he has put us here. So, sir, would you have made a video of me? Nay. On my oath, I... I will not go. I am reckless now, and I shall not stir from here. Besides, this is amazing. Oh, so our pressure is a heroine. Monsieur de Berger, I am your cousin. We will defend you well. I have no fear of that, my friends. And by good luck, I have chosen a hat that will suit me well with the battlefield. But were it not wisest that the Count de Guiche retire, they may begin the attack. That is not to be brooked. I go to inspect the cannon and shall return. You still have time to think better of it. Never. Roxanne. No. She stays. Roxanne. No. Not shall make me stir from this spot. It is. Perchance more seemly, since things are thus, that I present to you some of these gentlemen who are about to have the honour of dying before your eyes. Baron de Prérescou de Colignac. Madame. Baron de Casterac et de Cousac. Vidame de Mulgurio, Estressac le, le Bas de Scabrio. Chevalier d'Antignac Gizé. Baron Ilo de Blagnac, Salachon de Castel Crabouy. But how many names have you each? Fours. Pray, upon the hand that holds your kerchief. Why? My company had no flag. But now, by my faith, they will have the fairest in all the camp. <laughs> tis somewhat small. But tis of lace. I could die happy, having seen so sweet a face, if I had something in my stomach, were it but a nut. Shame on you. What? Talk of eating when a lovely woman. But your camp air is keen. I myself am famished. Pasties, gold for casse, uh, old wines, there's my bill of fare. Pray, bring it all here. All that? Where on earth find it? In my carriage. How? How? No. Serve up, carve. Look a little co closer at my coachman, gentlemen, and you will recognize a man most welcome. All the sauces can be sent to the table, if you will. Tis Ragano. Ragano, let's go. Ah, oh, kind fairy. <laughs> gentlemen. Bravo, bravo. bravo. Oh, bravo, the Spaniards bravo. gazing on a lady so dainty fair overlooked the fair so dainty. Hark, Christian. And occupied with gallantry, perceive not the gallantine. Christian, privy, one word. And Venus so attracted their eyes that Diana could secretly pass by with her fawn. I must speak with you. Put it all on the ground. Come, make yourself use. Truffled peacock. <laughs> By the mass, we shall not brave the last hazard without having a gullet full. Pardon, a baluster feast. <laughs> the cushions are stuffed with otolan. Unfold me that napkin. Come, come, be nimble. Each of the carriage lamps is a little larger. I must speak with you ere you speak to her. My whip handle is an eyeless sausage. 
Since we are to die, let the rest of the army shift for itself. All for the Gascons. And mark, if De Guiche comes, let no one invite him. There. There. You have time enough. Do not eat too fast. Drink a little. Why are you crying? It is all so good. <laughs> Tut. Red or white? Some bread for Monsieur de Carbon. A knife. Pass your plate. A little of the crust. Some more. <laughs> Let me help you. Some champagne. A wing. How I worship her. And what will you? Nothing. Nay, nay, take this biscuit, steeped in muscat. Come, but two drops. Oh, tell me why you came. Wait. My first duty is to restore fellows. Hush, in a few moments. De Guiche. Quick, hide flasks, plates, pie dishes, game baskets, hurry! Let us all look unconscious. Upon your seat! Is everything covered up? <clears throat> it smells good here. La, la, la. What is the matter? You're very red. The matter? Nothing! Tis my blood boiling at the thought of the coming battle. What's that? Nothing. Tis a song. Just a little... You're merry, my friend. The approach of danger is intoxicating to them. Captain, I... Play, take me, but you look bravely, too. With the smell of powder. <sighs> Briefly, madame, what decision do you deign to take? I stay here. You must fly. I will stay. Since things are thus, give me a musket, one of you. Wherefore? Because I, too, mean to remain. Ha <laughs> ha! Alas, this is true values. This is true valor, sir. And you are Gaskin, after all, spite of your lace collar. What is all of this? I leave no woman in peril. Hark you, think you not we might give him something to eat? Vigils? Yeah. You'll see them coming from under every coat. You think I will eat your leavings? You make progress. I will fight without breaking my fast. Breaking my fast? He's got an accent. <laughs> I? Tis a gasket. <laughs> I have drawn my pikemen up in line. They are a resolute troop. Will you accept my hand and accompany me while I review them? Tell me, tell me quickly, what is this secret? Um, if Roxanne should... Um, should... Uh, speak of the letters. Yes, I know. Do not spoil all by seeming surprised. At what? I must explain to you. Oh, it is no great matter. I but thought of it today on seeing her. You have... Tell me quickly. You have written to her oftener than you think. How so? That's faith. I have taken it in hand to express your feelings, your flame for you. At times I wrote without saying, I am writing. Ah. It is simple enough. But how did you contrive since we've been cut off thus to... Uh, oh, before dawn, I was able to get through. That was simple, too. That was simple, too? And how oft, pray, you have I have I written? Twice in the week? Three times? Four? <laughs> More often still. What? Every day? Yes, every day. Twice. And that became so mad a joy for you that you braved death? Harsh! Not before her. <laughs> Christian at last. Now, tell me why, why by these fearful paths so perilous, across these ranks of ribald soldiery you have come? Love, your letters brought me here. What say you? Tis your fault. 
and risks. Your letters turned my head. All this month, how many? And the last one ever better than the one that went before. What? For a few inconsequent love letters? Hold your peace. You cannot conceive it. Ever since that night when, in a voice all new to me, under my window that you've revealed your soul, uh, ever since I have adored you, now your letters all this of love. Mm. I've heard that voice so tender, true, sheltering, face. Thy fault, I say, it drove me, the voice for the night. Oh, wise Penelope would ne'er have stayed. Mm. No. If her you wishes have picked such letters, but would have cast away her silken bobbins and fled to gain him, mad for love as Helen. Mm, but... I read, read again, grew faint for love, mm. sign utterly. Each separate page was like a fluttering flower petal. Mm. Her own soul and love best of mine. Imprinted in each burning word was love sincere and all powerful. Love sincere? Can that be felt, Roxanne? Aye, that it can. You come? Lord, I come. Were I to throw myself here at your knees, would you raise me? But tis my soul I lay at your feet. You can raise it never more. I come to crave your pardon. I this time to sue for pardon, now that death may overcome. For insults done to you when frivolous, that at I first loved you only for the pity's sake. Oh, and later, loveless, frivolous, like a bird that spreads its wings but cannot fly, arrested by your beauty, by your soul drawn close, I loved for both at once. And now? You yourself triumphed over yourself. And now, I love you only for your soul. Roxanne. Be happy. Be loved for beauty. Poor disguise, that time too soon wears threadbare, must be noble souls to souls aspiring a treasure. Your dear thoughts have now effaced that beauty that so won me at upset. Now I see the clearer. And I no more see it. Oh. You're doubtful of such victory. Roxanne. <laughs> I do not ask such love as that. I would be loved more simply for... For that which they have all in turn loved in thee? Shame. Oh, but be loved henceforth in a better way. No. The first love was best. Ah, how you err. Tis now that I love best. Love well. That which thy true self see, that I adore. Were your brilliance dimmed. Hush. I should love still. I, if your beauty should today depart. Say not so. Ah, uh, I say it. Ugly? How? Ugly? I swear I love you still. My God. Are you content at last? I... What is wrong? Nothing. I have two words to say. One second. But... <laughs> Those poor fellows, shortly doomed to death, my love deprives them of the sight of you. Go, speak to them. Smile on them ere they die. Dear Christian. <laughs> Cyrano! What? Why so pale? She does not love me! What? Tis you she loves. No. For she loves me only for my soul. Truly? Yes. Thus you see that soul is you. Therefore, tis you she loves, and you love her. Aye. Oh, I know it. Ah, tis true. You love to madness. Aye, and worse. Then tell her so. No. 
And why not? Look at my face and be answered. She'd love me were I ugly. Said she so? Aye, in those words. I'm glad she told you that. But believe it not, I am well pleased she thought to tell you. Take it not for truth. Never grow ugly. She'd reproach me then. <laughs> then I intend discovering. No, I beg. I. She shall choose between us. Tell her all. No, no, I will not have it. Spare me this. Because my face is happily fair, shall I destroy your happiness? To her too unjust. And I, because by nature's freak, I have the gift to say all that perchance you feel. Shall I be fatal to your happiness? Tell all. It is ill done to tempt me thus. Too long I've borne about within myself, a rival to myself. I'll make an end. Christian. Our union without witness, secret clandestine, can be easily dissolved if we survive. My God, he still persists. I will be loved myself or not at all. I'll go see what they do. There, at the end of the post, speak to her. Let her choose one of us too. It will be you. Pray God. Roxanne? No! No! What? Cyrano has things important for your ear. Important how? He's gone. Tis not, oh. You know how he sees importance in a trifle. <laughs> Did he doubt of what I said? Yes, I saw he doubted. But are you sure you told him all the truth? Yes. I would love him were he... Does that word embarrass you before my face, Roxanne? I... Will not hurt me. Say it. If he were ugly. Yes, ugly. I hear a shot. Hideous. Hideous, yes. Disfigured. I. Grotesque? He could not be grotesque. You'd love the same. The same. Nay, even more. Thank God. It's true. Perchance love waits me there. I. Roxanne. Listen. Cyrano. What? Hush. Oh, God. What is it? All is over now. Oh, another shot. It's too late now. I, I can never tell. What has chanced? Nothing. And those men? What were you just about to say before? What was I saying? Nothing now, I swear. I swear that Christian saw his nature were, nay, that they are the noblest, uh, grandest. Were? Oh. All is over now. Oh, Christian. Struck by the first shot of the enemy. Make haste! Christian! Form line! Handle your match! Christian. I told her all, Christian. She loves you still. Sir. Oh, my sweet love. Draw ramrods! He is not dead. Open your charges with your teeth! She grows cold against my own. Ready? Present? A letter. Tis for me. My letter. Fire! Oh. Oxan! Hawk! They, they, they fight! Stay yet a while, for he is dead and you and I. Was not his a beautiful, beauty, beauteous soul? A soul wondrous. I, Roxanne. An inspired poet. I, Roxanne. Mind sublime. Oh, yes. A heart too deep for common minds to plumb. A spirit subtle, charming, 
Ay, Roxanne. Dead, my love. Ay, let me die today, since all unconscious she mourns me in him. This is the signal. The trumpet flourishes. The French bring the provisions into camp. Hold but the place a while. There is blood upon the letter. Tears. Surrender. No. The danger's ever greater. I will charge. Take her away. God, his tears, his blood. But she's swooned away. Stand fast. Lay down your arms. No. Never. No. Now that you have proved your valor, sir, fly and save her. So be it. Gain but time. The victory is ours. Good. Farewell, Roxanne. We are breaking. I am wounded. Wounded twice. Gaskins! Who? Gaskins! Never turn your backs. Have no fear. I have two deaths to avenge. My friends who slain and my dead happiness. Float there. Lace handkerchief broidered with her name. Fall on them, Gaskins. Crush them. Let us salute them. Fire! Fire! Who are these men who rush on death? The bold cadets of Gascony, of Carbon and Gastel Jaloux, brawling, swaggering boastfully. The bold cadets! End of Act Four. Act Five. Sister Claire glanced in the mirror once, nay, twice, to see if her court suited. It is not well. But I saw Sister Martha take a plum out of the tart. That was ill done, my sister. A little glance. And such a little plum. I shall tell this to Monsieur Cyrano. Nay, they do not. He will mock. He'll say we nuns are vain. And greedy. Aye, and kind. It is not true, Grey Mother Marguerite. He has come, each week on Saturday, for ten years to the convent. Aye, and more. Ever since, fourteen years ago, the day his cousin brought here, midst our woolen quaffs, the worldly mourning of her widow's veil like a blackbird's wing among the convent doves. He only has the skill to turn her mind from grief, unsoftened yet by time, unhealed. It's cheerful when he comes. But he's not a faithful Catholic. We will convert him. I forbid. My daughters, you attempt that subject. Nay, weary him not, he might less oft come here. But God... Nay, never fear. God knows him well. Every Saturday when he arrives, he tells me, Sister, I eat meat on Friday. Ah, says he so. Well, the last time he came, food had not passed his lips for a whole two days. Mother! He's poor. Who told you so, dear mother? Monsieur Lebret. None help him? He permits not. Tis time we go in. Madame Madeleine walks in the garden with a visitor. The Marshal of Grimaud? Is he, I think. It is many months now since he came to see her. He's so busy. The court, the camp, the world. Oh, ever vainly fair, ever in weeds? Ever. Still faithful? Still. Am I forgiven? I, since I am here. His was a soul, you say? When you knew him. <laughs> Maybe. I perchance too little knew him, and his last lever, letter ever next to your heart. Hung from this chain, 
A gentle scapery. And dead, you love him still? At times, me seems, he is but partly dead. Our hearts still speak, as if his love still living wrapped me round. Cyrano comes to see you. Often I, dear, kind old friend, call him my gazette. He never fails to come. Beneath this tree, they place his chair, if it be fine. I wait, I broider, the clock strikes at the last stroke to hear, for now, never look to turn me. Too sure I hear his cake and keeps himself. With a gentle raillery, he mocks my tapestry that's never done, and it tells me all the gossip of the week. Why? You're so right. How goes it with our friend? Ill. Very ill. Oh. He exaggerates. All that I prophesy, desertion, want, his letters now make him fresh enemies, attacking the sham nobles, sham devout, sham brave, the thieving authors, all the world. Uh, but his sword still holds them all in check. None get the better of him. Time will show. Ah, but I fear for him. Not man's attack. Solitude, hunger, and cold December days, the wolf-like steel into his chamber drear. Blow the assassins that I fear for him. Each day he tightens by one hole his belt, that poor nose, tinted like old ivory. He has retained one shabby suit of serge. Aye, there is one who has no prize of fortune, yet is not to be pitied. My lord marshal. Pity him not. He has lived out his vows, free in his thoughts, as in his actions free. My lord. True, I have all, and he has not. Yet I were proud to take his hand. Adieu. I go with you. I true, I, I envy him. Look you, and life is brimful of success, though the past holds no action foul. One feels a thousand self-disgusts, of which the sum is not remorse, but a dim, vague unrest. And as one mounts the steps of worldly fame, the duke's furred mantles trail within their folds a sound of dead illusions, vain regrets, a rustle, scarce a whisper like as when mounting the terrace steps by your morning robe sweeps in its train the dying autumn. You are pensive? True, I am. Monsieur Lebray, a word with your permission. True that none dare to attack your friend, but many hate him. Yesterday at the Queen's card play, it was said that Cyrano may die by accident. Let him stay in, be prudent. Prudent? He? He's coming here. I'll warn him, but... What is it? Raguignol would see you, madam. Let him come. He comes to tell his troubles. Having been an author, save the mark. Poor fellow, now, by turns, he is a singer. Bathing man. Then actor. Beetle. Wig maker. Teacher of the lute. What will he be today, by chance? Madame. Ah, you here, sir. Tell all your miseries to him, I will return anon. But, madame, since you are here, tis best she should not know. I was going to your friend just now, was but a few steps from the house. When I saw him go out, I hurried to him, saw him turn the corner. Suddenly, from out a window where he was passing, was it chance, maybe? A lackey let fall a large piece of wood. Cowards of Cyrano. I ran. I mean, I saw. It is hideous. Saw a poet, sir, our friend, struck to the ground, a large wound in his head. He's dead? No, but I bore him to his room. Ah, oh, his room. What a thing to see. He suffers. No, his consciousness has flown. Saw you a doctor? One was kind. He came. My poor Cyrano. 
we must not tell this to Roxanne suddenly. What said the doctor? Said, well, I know not. Fever? Meningitis? Oh, could you see him? All his head bound up. But let us haste. There's no one by his bed. And if he try to rise, sir, he might die. Come through the chapel. Tis the quickest way. Monsieur Lebret. Lebret goes when I call. Tis some new trouble of good Raganus. What a beauty in September's close. My sorrows eased. April's joy dazzled it, but autumn wins it with her dying calm. There comes the famous armchair where he sits, dear faithful friend. It is the parlor's best. Thanks, sister. He'll be here now. The hour strikes. My silks? Why now? The hour's struck, how strange. To be behind his time at last today. Perhaps the portis, where's my thimble? Here, is preaching to him. Yes, she must be preaching. Surely he must come soon. A dead leaf. Nothing besides could scissors in my bag could hinder him. Monsieur de Bergerac. What was I saying? Time has dimmed the tints. How harmonize them now? For the first time, late, for the first time, all these 14 years. I made his villainous. I raged, was, was stayed by a bold, unwelcome visitor. Some creditor. My cousin, the last creditor, who has a debt to claim from me. And you, have you paid it? <laughs> no, not yet. I put it off, said, cry of mercy, this is Saturday. When have I got a standing rendezvous that not defers? Call in an hour's time. <laughs> well, a creditor can always wait. I shall not let you go ere twilight falls. Happily, the fault. I quit you ere it falls. How now? Have you not teased the sister? True. Sister, come here! <laughs> what those bright eyes bent air on the ground. Oh! Hush! It is not. I broke fast yesterday. I know, I know. That's how he is so pale. Come presently to the refectory. I'll make you drink a famous bowl of soup. You'll come? Aye, aye. There, see? You are more reasonable today. The sister would convert you? Nay, not I. <laughs> oh, but it's true. You preach to me no more. You, once so glib with holy words, I am astonished. Stay! I will surprise you too. Hark, I permit you something new. To, to pray for me tonight at chapel time. Oh, oh. Good sister Martha is struck dumb. <laughs> I did not wait your leave to pray for you. That tapestry, beshrew me if my eyes will ever see it finished. I was sure to hear that well-known jest. The autumn leaves. Soft, golden, brown, like a Venetian's hair. See how they fall. I see how brave they fall in the last journey downward from the bow. To rot within the clay, yet lovely still, hiding the horror of the last decay with all the wayward grace of careless flight. What? Melancholy, you? Nay, nay, Roxanne. Then let the dead leaves fall the way they will, and chat. What, have you nothing new to tell, my court gazette? <laughs> Listen. Uh? Saturday, the 19th, having eaten to excess of pear conserve, the king felt feverish. The lancet quelled this treasonable revolt, and the august pulse beats at a normal pace. At the Queen's Ball on Sunday, 30 score of best white waxen tapers were consumed. Our troops 
they say have chased the Austrians. Four sorcerers were hanged. The little dog of Madame Dathis took a dose. I bid you hold your tongue, Monsieur de Bergerac. <laughs> Monday, uh, not much. Uh, cloud change protector. Uh, Tuesday, uh, the court repaired to Fontainebleau. Wednesday, the Montgalat said to Comte de Fisk, nope. Uh, Thursday, Mancini, Queen of France, almost. Friday, the Montglat to Count Fisk said yes. And on Saturday, the 26th. He spoons. Cyrano. Yeah, what is this? Nay, on my word. Tis nothing, let me be. What? That old wound of Eris sometimes, as you know. Dear friend. Tis nothing. Till pass soon. <laughs> See, it has passed. Each of us has his wound. I, I have mine. Never healed up. Not healed yet, my old wound. Tis here. Beneath this letter, brown with age, all stained with teardrops and still stained with blood. His letter. He promised me one day that I should read it. What would you? His letter? Yes, I would fain. Today. See, here it is. Have I your leave to open? Open. Read. Roxanne, adieu. I must soon die, this very night, beloved. And I feel my soul heavy with love untold. I die no more, as in days of old, my loving, longing eyes will feast on your least gesture. I, the least. I mind me the way you touch your cheek with your finger, softly as you speak. Ah, me, I know that gesture well. My heart cries out. I cry, farewell. But how you read that letter, one would think. My life, my love, my jewel, my sweet. My heart has been yours in every beat. You read in such a voice, so strange, and yet it is not the first time I hear that voice. Here, dying, and there, in the land on high, I am he who loved, who loves you. I. How can you read? It is, it's too dark to see. Fourteen years long, he has played this part of the kind old friend who comes to laugh and chat. Roxanne. It's you. No, never. Roxanne, no. I, I, I should have guessed. Each time he said my name. No, it was not I. It was you. I swear. I see through all the generous counterfeit, the letters, you. No. The sweet, mad love words, you. No. The voice that thrilled the night, you. You. I swear you err. Soul, it was your soul. I loved you not. You loved me not. Twas he. You loved me. No. See how you falter now. No, my sweet love, I never loved you. <sighs> Things dead, long dead, see how they rise again? Why, why keep this silence all these 14 years, when on this letter which he never wrote, the tears are your tears? Blood stains were his. Why then, that noble silence, kept so long, broken today for the first time? Why? What madness, here, I, I knew it well. What now? He has brought his death by coming, madame. God, oh, oh, then, that faintness of a moment since. Why, <laughs> true. Interrupted the Gazette. Saturday, uh, 26th, that did the time. Uh, assassination of de Bergerac. What says he? You know his head all bound. What has he chanced? How? Who? To be struck down. Pierced my sword of the heart from a hero's hand. That I had dreamed. Oh, mockery of fate. Killed I, of all men, 
in an ambuscade, struck from behind by a lackey's hand. Tis very well I am foiled, foiled in all, even in my death. Oh, monsieur. Uh, Ragano, weep not so bitterly. Uh, what do you now, old comrade? Trim the lights from Moliere's stage. <laughs> Moliere. Yes, but I shall leave tomorrow. I cannot bear it. Yesterday they played Scappin. I swore, I saw he thieved a scene from you. What? A whole scene? Oh, yes, indeed, monsieur. The famous one. Que diable al infier. Moliere has stolen that. He did well. How went the scene? It told, I, I think it told. <laughs> oh, how they all laughed. Look you, it was my life to be the prompter everyone forgets. That night, when neath your window Christian spoke, under your balcony, do you remember? Well, there was the allegory of my whole life. I, in the shadow, at the ladder's foot, while others lightly mount to love and fame. Just, very just, here on the threshold, drear of death, I pay my tribute with the rest. To Moliere's genius, Christian's fair face. Let them go, pray. When the bell rings, go. Sister. Call no one. Leave me not. When you come back, I shall be gone for I. I was somewhat playing for music. Hark, it has come. Live, for I love you. No. In fairy tales, when the ill-starred prince, the lady says, I love you, all his ugliness fades fast. But I remain the same up to the last. I have marred your life. I, I. You, blessed my soul. Never on me had rested woman's love. My mother even could not find me fair. I had no sister, and when grown a man, I feared the mistress who would mock at me. But I have had your friendship. Grace to you, a woman's charm, has passed across my path. Your other lady love has come. I see. I loved but one, yet twice I lose my love. Hark you, liberate. I shall soon reach the moon tonight, alone, with no projectiles thrown. What are you saying? I tell you, it is there, there, that they send me for my paradise. There I shall find at last the souls I love in exile. Galileo, Socrates. No, no, it is too clumsy, too unjust. So great a heart, so great a poet, thy like this? What, die? Hark to Le Bret who scolds. Dear friend. Oh, cadets of Gascony, <laughs> the elemental mass. Ah, oh, yes, they hit. Yeah, he's sighing still, he raved. The panic is said. <sighs> Mais que diable allait le faire? Mais que diable allait le faire dans sa galère? Philosopher, metaphysician, rhymer, brawler, and musician. Famed for his lunar activity. And the unnumbered duels he fought in lover also by interposition lies here Hercule Savienne de Cierno de Bergerac. He was everything, he was not. I cry out. But I may not stay. See the moon ray that comes to call me hence. <sighs> I would not, I would not bid you mourn less faithfully that good Christian, brave. I would only ask that when my body shall be cold and clay, you wear those sable morning weeds for two and mourn a while for me in mourning him. I swear it to you. No, there, not there. What's seated? No, let no one hold me up. Only the tree, it comes. Even now my feet have turned to stone. My, fa my hands are gloved with lead. But since death comes, I shall meet him still afoot. 
and sword in hand. You're an L. You're an L. Why, I will believe he dares to mock my nose. <laughs> Yo, insolent. What say you? It is useless, sigh, I know. But who fights ever hoping for success? I fought for lost cause and for fruitless quest. You there, who are you? You are thousands, ah! I know you now, old enemies of mine. Falsehoods, ha! How about you, ha! And compromise, prejudice, treachery. Surrender I, parley, no, never. You too, folly, you? I know that you will lay me low at last. <laughs> Let it be. Yet I fall fighting, fighting still. You strip from me the laurel and the rose. Take all. Despite you, there is one yet thing I hold against you all. And when tonight I enter Christ's fair courts and lowly bowed, sweet with doffed cask and brazen, heaven's threshold blue, one thing is left that void of stain or smudge. I bear away, despite you. Is. End of play. Thank you all for joining us for Cyrano de Bergerac. We would once again like to thank all of the actors who have volunteered to read with us this evening and a special shout out to uh, Dan Kostelik, also known as your friendly neighborhood Shakespeare. Visit him at his website, shakespeareapproves.com or on Facebook at Shakespeare Approves, your friendly neighborhood Shakespeare. Um, please also check out a Midsummer Night Stream of Quality produced by our friend Maisha L and I. If you can contribute to or share the Indiegogo link in the comments of this video. We have links to all of that content, all of uh, Master Shakespeare's con content in the comments of this video. If you want more information on us, including how to be uh, one of these pretty faces before you involved in a reading like this one, you can go to our Facebook page, Zenith Players, and send us a message or send an email to casting at zenithplayers.com and I will get back to you as soon as possible. We want to continue to express our support to all of those out there who are working to keep us safe and continuing to protest and demonstrate. Join us this coming Sunday as we continue our Shakespeare readings with Romeo and Juliet and next Monday for Antigone. Thank you and good night.